Here we go then for the last time. Big, big drama. FIA Gran Turismo European. Asia Oceano. America's regional final champions. Yeah.
time to decide who is going to walk away with that trophy. Yes, welcome to Monaco live for the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup Grand Final. My name's Chris McCarthy. And my name is Jimmy Broban. Yes, thousands of hours of planning, production and gameplay have gone into these events. Let's see who's going to be crown champion. Einen Europameistertitel konnte Hisal uns schon nach Deutschland bringen. Kann es auch der Weltmeistertitel sein? Das werden wir heute Abend herausfinden. Mein Name ist René Butler. Und ich bin Florian Strauß. Wir kommentieren natürlich auch live wieder den dritten Tag für euch hier aus Monaco. Nur noch die 16 Besten der Welt kämpfen in vier spannenden Rennen um den Titel. Bienvenue ici à Monaco pour la finale de la Nations Cup du FIA GT Championship. Vous le savez, il n'y a plus de Français en lice, mais un concurrent nous a offert un podium hier. Et rien que pour ça, allez Yamanaka! Benvenuti alla finale Nations Cup per questo FIA GT Sport World Championship. Sarà una battaglia, nessuno sa chi vincerà, ma una cosa è certa, nessuno mollerà mai, Emilio. I magnifici 16 e fra loro un italiano partirà dal fondo della griglia della classifica, ma Giorgio Mangano ci ha abituato delle imprese, quindi forza Giorgio e vinca il migliore. Todo preparado para la gran fiesta del motor. Bienvenidos a la FIA Gran Turismo Championship. Que ruja España, que ruja Latinoamérica. Soy MC Epsilon, para mí es un placer estar aquí con todos ustedes. Y a mi lado, el grandísimo Lucas Ordoñez. Hola Epsilon, hola a todos. Muchísimas ganas ya de conocer al primer campeón del mundo. Así que fuerza con todos. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Eduardo Félix da Costa. Estamos en Mónaco y hoy vamos a encontrar el campeón del mundo Gran Turismo. É verdade, Duarte, chegou o grande dia, já chega de eliminatórias. Hoje vamos saber quem é o grande campeão. Infelizmente não temos nenhum português a prova para a final, mas vamos ter sim dois grandes brasileiros e nós vamos estar a torcer por eles. Fiquem aí. As you're probably aware by now, we are in one of the most iconic racing cities in the entire world, Monte Carlo. And if you've been joining us up until this point, you know that we've had some pretty spectacular racing. Isn't that right, Matt? Yep, Julia, I think it's fair to say that in the Nations Cup and in the Manufacturing Series as well, so far, the racing has been pretty much off the scale. Now, heavy braking down into the right hand, and we now... We've seen manufacturers go head to head. Yes, in a one hour nail biting endurance race that saw Team Lexus crowned the Manufacturer Series champions. The Lexus are the FIA GT World Final Champions. And on Friday, the semi finals of the Nations Cup went down. Ups, downs, crashes, passes, and penalties. We've almost seen it all. Here comes Brooks down the inside. Oh! Oh! Many of you have been with us from the start, but if you haven't been, the best is yet to come. Yeah, will Igor Fraga's exceptional IRL and in-game driving skills be enough to beat the unerring consistency of the German Mikhail Hizal? Or will we see a surprise, someone like Hungary's Patrick Blazer? Well, we are about to find out. Is this the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup World Final? I mean, I know that we have like some of the best drivers in the entire world in this room right now, but can they drive in the heels that I am wearing this evening? Because let me tell you, <laughs> that was incredibly difficult to drive that car up yeah. and also get out of it without um, <clears throat> a moderate accident. That's going to be the challenge for next year. Never mind these different races. We're going to get all these guys to see if they can drive a GT3 car in heels. Why not? I mean, you did to it. Be, well done. tell me you wouldn't watch that. To be honest, I lost a sweepstake. I thought you were going to crash, I must say. <gasps> Outrageous. Scan no, I think the guys in the track also, also were in on that, uh, Matt. So <laughs> there, uh, there thanks very much. Cheers, guys. A lot of faith in my driving skills. Right. <laughs> so um, obviously today is the culmination of over a year of hard work for some of these drivers. They have been training hard to make it to this moment to walk away with this Nations Cup. Everything to play for today. No goers of a repechage race here. They've no. got to bring it all to the line every single race. Why don't we take a look how this is going to play out? 
Yeah, so we started out with literally thousands of online players all over the world and initially reduced it to 90 with 30 drivers taking part in three regional finals. We took our first 10 from the Asia and Oceania finals in, in Tokyo, then made it 20 at the European finals in Madrid. And our final lineup here in Monaco was completed at the Americas finals in Las Vegas. We've seen some unbelievable racing all over the world. It's continued here in Monte Carlo and we just cannot wait to see what happens here tonight. Well, it's just, we just don't know. Everything we think is going to happen doesn't happen. No, it, it doesn't. And you know what the big thing is? What We saw a fantastic man manufacturer series yesterday, and these guys uh, in that series in particular, and online as well, they get to choose their cars. They, they all have their favourites. They've come top of the rankings in their favourite cars and on their favourite tracks. But here in the Nations Cup, we saw it in the semi-finals as well. The cars are drawn at random. The guys uh, it, it, with one of the tracks tonight, they've never even raced it before. So it's all about who can adapt the quickest. It, Test a different skill set to what these guys can do at home and what you guys uh, can do at home on your, on your PlayStations as well. Well, yeah, this is it. So why don't we take a look on how we got to this point with a bit of a semi-final recap, just so we can see what's going on here. Yeah, well, this all took place on Friday evening. You can watch these races in full still online if you want to, but uh, it was an awesome race. Uh, Igor Fraga, the America's champion, escaped at the front, but there was an awesome battle for second place between uh, Coque Lopez and Jeffrey Gallan as well from Canada. Uh, but it was Igor Fraga who took the win and 10 points from the Group A race. And then in Group B, our Asia's champion, uh, Ryota Kokuban had another Great battle head to head with the European champion Mikhail Hizal. So this was the one that we all wanted to see. The boys delivered, but it was Hizal in the end who took the victory. Then in the repechage race, for anybody who finished outside the top six in those group races, one of those was Adam Sosuilo, which was a big shock, and he almost went out in the repechage as well. The top four uh, were the boys who were going to go through from this one to the final. And after an epic battle with uh, Carlos Salazar right down to the final lap, Susuilo joined Lakovsky, Rubila and Mangano in tonight's final. Yeah, it's been pretty much non-stop. In fact, every single race has been nail-bitingly close and there's been a lot of fights. And everything's been on the line as well, Julia, you know, because these guys have worked so hard, as you said, to get here. They've had such a wonderful time, but they don't want to go home, you know? They want to make mean, it through to tonight. I don't want to go tonight. home, and I'm not even racing. It's no, lovely. I don't ever want to go home here. It's lovely, yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> so why don't we explain a little bit of the structure and the schedule of how today's going to pan out for you. Let's take a look. So, um, yeah, we're going to be having a few races today. Matt, fill us in the details. Well, we sure are. As I said, we have 30 drivers who made it here to Monaco. We're down to our last 16 now after a stunning day of action on Friday when six came through each semi-final group race and a further four from that dramatic repechage. They also scored points in those races, so four races today and the cumulative points score from Friday and this evening to decide our overall Nations Cup champion. It's pretty straightforward there. It's pretty straightforward, yeah. There's, like you said, there's no repechage, there's no second chances right now. It's just, it's an accumulative point score over four races. Double points in the final race, by the way, as <sighs> that well. Final so race. Just a little extra twist at the end. Oh, that final race is always a nail-bitingly close one. So um, we actually go out with uh, on our commentary in a lot of different languages, and we've added a new one in to the mix this time, which is Portuguese. And actually, we're going to go and talk to one of our Portuguese commentators, Felipe, right now. How are you doing in the booth? Very well, very comfortable. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey, look at you, all the way back there. You look very comfy. We're not allowed to sit in chairs. Um, so <laughs> so um, obviously you actually drive uh, in real life as well. Have there been any particular drivers who really caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it caught my eye and many other guys. Is the, the Igor Braga from Brazil. He did a fantastic job and so far. I mean, today is the final. Um, I think the nerves of everyone will be up there and uh, we don't know how it's going to handle that, that pressure because it's the same for everyone. But uh, we saw as well Rubilar has been very, very fast in the... In the, um, in, the, in the race of nations yesterday of the manufacturer, so he's for sure he has a, a voice to, to, to do the final. Let's see. Well, I mean, this is the thing. So Frog has been very, very consistent. Rubilar has kind of been, you know, up and down a little bit. Um, what's your kind of read on Hizal? How do you think he's going to do? Well, um, I, think, I think everything is open now because everyone, everyone that is in here, they prove that they are very quick. Uh, I think as we've seen yesterday in Nürburgring, who does less mistakes is the one that is more ahead. You can be very fast for one lap, but then if you do a mistake after one or two laps, then all the advantage that you are having, like two tenths per lap, two tenths, and then you just do a mistake and all goes away in a couple of laps. So it needs to be cold head, but again, 
the winner here has a huge thing to, to prove and uh, I think the nerves goes again and the emotions and I think they go for that for the first time and uh, we need to see who does less mistakes and obviously on the limit. Okay, well, thank you so much, Felipe, for chatting to us. Have a really, really good uh, race. This. Enjoy your commentary. And uh, why don't we take a look now at exactly where all of those drivers are in the standings of the qualifiers. Let's take a quick look here. Yeah, well, Felipe knows the score. Igor Fraga with the fastest. Well, thank you. Fine, also winner of that Group A race, 10 points, but it's more complicated than that. As he said, look out for my tip from fifth place there, Jeffrey Gallan uh, from Canada, finished second in the group race. He starts, as I said, fifth on the grid. Britain's Adam Sassuolo there in eighth. We talked about Mikhail Hizal, the European champion. He, he won his group race to take 10 points into tonight, but he starts from 10th, so he's got his work cut out. And watch out as well for Patrick Blajan and for Giorgio Mangano as well yeah, from the back of the grid. they're not going to take it lying down at all. No, well, they're both aggressive drivers. They've both got Very. good form. Uh, Blajan did really well in Salzburg, didn't he, in the World Tour event earlier this year. And uh, they're, they're really exciting drivers to watch. So, I mean, uh, you know, like, if you're going to be aggressive, now's kind of the time, right? Yeah, now or never, basically. Yeah, <laughs> so watch out from those two guys uh, for the back of the grid. So uh, without yeah. further ado, I think it's time to welcome our drivers now. The FIA uh, Certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup. Class of 2018, please welcome your drivers. From Italy, we just talked about him right now, Giorgio Cinquantasette Mangano. And from Hungary, Patrick Fuvaros Lajan. From Hong Kong, winner of the second race in the Asia's final, please welcome Jonathan Wong. Also from Hong Kong, representing Yat Lam Law. And the Spanish sensation from the Madrid finals. What a performance it was to get here tonight. Coque Lopez. He's a man from down under, the winner of yesterday's repercharge race from Australia, Cody Lakowski. And the winner of all three races in the Madrid finals, our European champion, Mikael Lightning. He's our. We had four representatives from Japan in these world finals here. Please welcome one of them, Tomoaki Yamanaka. And from the GT Academy class of 2013, from the UK, Adam Suswilo. And now all the way from Chile, the star of the manufacturer's race yesterday. What a performance that was from Nico Rubila. Please give a warm welcome to our Asia and Oceania champion from Japan, Ryota Kokubun. And before the America's finals in Las Vegas, he'd never left Canada. Now he's here in the world finals in Monaco, Jeffrey Galland. From Santiago, Chile, second in the Americas finals, it's Fabian McQueen, Portilla.
Also from South America, strong presence tonight from Belo Horizonte in Brazil, Adriano Caraza. Another Japanese driver tonight representing all the way here in Monaco, Shogo Yoshida. And on pole position tonight, our America's champion and the Group A race winner, Igor Fraga. Ladies and gents, that's your Nations Cup class of 2018. Please be upstanding, everybody, here in the auditorium for the national anthem of Monaco. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it is all about, the FIA Gran Turismo Championships for 2018. Here we go then, and we're off away in racing. Who's going to emerge from the lead in all of this? What a fantastic move, but the race is not over yet. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh it's over! It's over. Oh. He has to keep them up behind. Oh, but he's running a bit wide. They're still side by side. This is fantastic driving. You can't ask for much more than that. Wow, I'm super excited to get this thing kicked off. Why don't we get underway with a bit more into the nitty gritty? So I believe Matt had a bit of a chat yesterday to find out a little bit more about our first track that's in our race one. Well, of course, the opportunity to be amongst the first players in the world to try a new circuit on Gran Turismo is a huge honour for these drivers. We have Yamanaka-san here, and of course, to do it in a world final as well, you must be so excited about this. So, this is really the first time to go to a new course. I'm very happy to go to a new course. I'm very happy to go to a new course. I'm very happy to go to a new course. そうですまあ、ただレースなので、まあ、今回はそのコースに対して真剣にアプローチしないといけないですけど、まあ、そうですね本当に最初にプレーできることにこう誇りを感じています。So to be driving a circuit that you don't know in a world final as well, what's your approach going to be to learn in the circuit as fast as you can? そうですね、まあ、早く走るためには、まあ、まずは 100% でいかないことっていうのが大事だと思っていて。その着実にどこをどのようにこう綺麗に走ったらいいのか無駄がないように走るためにどうやってアプローチしたらいいのかっていうのを考えて走ろうと思ってます。It's a big
So the Tokyo Expressway, south in a loop, a new track for the drivers and for you guys at home as well. Here's a first look then, being an expressway, it's obviously tight, effectively two lanes wide with little or no runoff or room for error. It's also fast, really fast, with a couple of long straights followed by tight corners, check out turns one and two, the hairpin at turn 11, and some mega quick kinks as well are there at seven and eight. Uh, that section as well, look at that from 13 through 16, fast and flowing. And I reckon uh, plenty of potential here, Julia, to keep the stewards busy tonight. That looks absolutely <laughs> mad. D that's insane. Look yeah. at that. Wh what? It's fast, it's twisty, it's tight. <laughs> and like I said, you know, these guys, they've got to make ground up. The pressure's on them. So I think the stewards, uh, good luck, guys, because there might be some contact in this. <laughs> Sorry, I think. Just a little bit, maybe. So uh, we'd love to know what you guys think at home. Hit us up using the hashtag FIA GTC and GT Sport. We want to know what car you want to race on this brand new track when it updates in December. So. I think we should get on to the next bit, which is, of course, the tyre strategy. Now, this is a crucial part of any race that we have in the Nations Cup. Uh, why don't we take a look at how this is going to break down? Yeah, it's a crucial part of any race. It's a tricky one as well uh, for these drivers to call because, of course, they've not really been on this, uh, on this track before. They had a little bit of time to practice earlier on. As Julie said, we want to know which car uh, you would choose to race this track. But tyre-wise, yeah, expect the guys at the front probably to go with softs and try and make a break. The guys further back might not want to think about the hards and, uh, sorry, might want to think about the hards in the early stages because what they don't want to do, because it is tight, because there's not a lot of places to pass and because they don't know where they're going to pass, they don't want to be wasting the soft tires early in the race don't waste if the they've soft. got people to pass. Yeah, it's so I think what we might see here is guys at the front going on the softs, maybe the guys in the middle going on the mediums <laughs> and the guys at the back going on the hards. <laughs> well, okay, tires is one thing. Let's take a look at the cars. Yeah, okay, so this is the M500 class, all right? So these are normal road cars tuned to around 500 horsepower. And when, of course, I say normal, I mean that in the very much in the uh, Gran Turismo sense of the word. The likes of <laughs> McLaren F1 uh, car here uh, in stock condition, tuned down a little bit in the case of the F1 car uh, to around 500 horsepower. BMW M4 would be tuned up. So they're all similar in terms of horsepower, not necessarily in terms of uh, performance because, of course, they all work in different ways. But look out for, for Jonathan Wong in the Ford GT. That car has some serious straight line speed. And this track, as we've already seen, has some seriously long straights. It does. I'm actually really excited to see this because this is all about adaptability as well. It's like, boom, new track, off you go. Yeah, exactly. This is the ultimate test of adaptability. It's the, it's the one key characteristic, I think, that tonight in general is going to separate uh, the wheat from the chaff, as it were. Oh, OK, fantastic. It's well, all what, wheat, really, and there's no chaff. Is you know what I mean? All right, don't dig yourself a hole. Right, let's get this first race kicked off. We'll chuck it over to our commentators. Thank you, Julia. Well, here we go. Grand finals time, Jimmy. I think before we go anywhere, we have to apologise to the viewers for the dab of Adam <laughs> Sosuelo. And if you're offended, I honestly wholeheartedly <laughs> apologise. Um, let's talk about the standings coming into this. We've had the semi-finals. Of course, we've driven the track as well in the commentators race, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, but points are, have been awarded in the semi-finals and in the rep charge as well. Here they are on screen for you. So Fraga and Izal, who both took wins in semi-finals, uh, got 10 points each. Kokibun and Lopez were both second, nine points apiece, and it went on from there. So Yoshida and Gallen were a third in their respected uh, semi-finals. There's the rest of the points at the moment. We have Yamanaka, Law, uh, Karatsa, Blashan, Lakovsky, Rubelar, Mangano, uh, Sosuilo down at the back there, just got through in the repercharge, took one point in the process. Uh, Jimmy, what were your thoughts on the track? We, we drove it in that commentator's race. I mean, of course, that wasn't a proper test. It was uh, a bit of a crash <laughs> fest, let's be honest. But uh, what, did, what did you think of it? I'm always, I'm always glad to say that we, the commentator races, don't tend to end up anywhere you can watch because it's very embarrassing. But a very fast flowing circuit broken up by a couple of tight hairpin turns and quite narrow in places too. Overtaking here is pretty much reserved for the tighter corners. But now let's head to the race and see how our drivers deal with it. Right then, it's time to go racing for the first time in the Nations Cup World Final. On pole position, it's going to be Igor Fraga, the Brazilian. Second place, Shogo Yoshida. Then in third place, as we get ready to go racing for the first time around Tokyo Expressway South at Inner Loop, it's Adriano Carazza. Then we have Fabian Portia, the Chilean, starting in fourth place in the Lexus. Starting fifth is Jeffrey Gallon. 
Then we have in sixth place the Oto Kokubun in the Honda NSX. Just to remind you, the cars were picked at random. Seventh place is Nicholas Rubelar in the Maserati. Eighth place, it is going to be Adam Sesquillo. This grid was formed, of course, of qualifying on Friday. Tomoaki Yamanaka is in the Jaguar F-Type, starting ninth place. Tenth place, it is Mick Hazel, most certainly one to watch, having won his semi-final uh, earlier in the week. There is Cody Nikola Lakovsky, potentially one to watch today. Then we have Jorge Lopez in the Lamborghini Diablo in 12th place. 13th, it is Yat Lamlor, one of two drivers from Hong Kong to have made the finals. Jonathan Wong, there's the next one. He is 14th in that Ford GT. Then 15th, we have Patrick Blashan, the Hungarian in the Nissan GTR Nismo. And starting at the back of the field, Giorgio Mangano in the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT. I spoke to some of the drivers earlier. Cars to watch out for could be the M4 Corvette and of, uh, Corvette, and of course that McLaren, which won in Madrid. A lot, of a lot of drivers at the front there going for the soft, some for the medium at the back. It's going to be a seven lap race. All drivers have to use two types of tyre, so one stop we are expecting in this one. Jimmy, over to you for the race start. We're well, already seeing just how narrow this circuit is as our drivers make their way to the start finish. And of course, also look out for that brand new F50 in the hands of Shoko Yoshida there in glorious Ferrari red coming round the last corner now onto what is essentially the front straight. I use that term loosely because it's not quite straight. You can see from here. And Igor Fraga will lead us off in the BMW M4. First race here of the FIA GT Championship World Final is about to get underway. The drivers just steadying themselves. Here we go then, guys. Igor Fraga will lead us off three, two, one, and away we go here at Monaco. Igor Fraga will lead us from Shogun Yoshida, Karatsa third, Portia fourth, Gallon fifth, down towards T1, a long left hander. Karatsa already looking to the inside of Yoshida, and he goes up to second place before we've got to T1. Yoshida pushed wide in the Ferrari, and then pull into the Armco. Sparks fly off on the side of that Ferrari. That's going to be very expensive for the owner of that car, but now we run all the way down to the hairpin. This is what we want to try and sit stream, get yourself to the inside before our first heavy break. And so Yoshida still on the inside. Here we go, and Fraga leads. Perhaps the second, Yoshida third, and Portia fourth. Let's look to our standing to the left. See if anyone goes right. And that is Portia goes very wide. I think he's running to the wall. There he is, there, the Chilean driver sliding out of the right-hander and now coming through the shipping container. Looks like Jeff Gallon has gone down to last. A terrible start for the Canadian. Yeah, he's off the back of the field as well, Gallon. Patrick Blashan, I think, got caught up in something. Uh, Mick Hizal has picked up a penalty, so... Well, Mick Hizal's chances of overall victory have just taken a slight knock there. Now we've had an incident involving Gallon and Kokibin, so Kokibin, the other driver involved in that incident, which has seen Gallon drop to the back of the field, but we won't comment any further because we don't know any more about it just yet. Right, we are going to be approaching a very tight hairpin shortly, and Igor Fraga is away and clear, so no need to defend for him. Kratza, likewise, it could be close for fourth place. Top three are escaping here here we go through the hairpin his owls dropped a place to Lakovsky Lopez in ninth I think Mangano's come up to 11th place and his owl back up to six going past Yamanaka and Lakovsky so in the background there Yamanaka and Hazel are trading places unfortunately we don't have a camera angle right now here's Montia in the LC for 100 Lexus there is Lakovsky there side by side uh, with Hazal to the inside and that McLaren F1 he takes the position of Nick Hazal who's driving the Porsche but Hazal of course does have a penalty, starting in 10th position, so it's made up two. And oh, Kokubin, no. our Asia Oceana regional champion, has been given a two-second penalty for colliding with another car. That is very much unlike the Japanese driver. Yeah, he's on nine points at the moment, but uh, any chance of him making a huge improvement of that, uh, but just taking a twist. Now, Gallen there was just attempting to go around the outside of Yat Lam Law, and I think he pulled the move off. Fraga has stayed out of trouble and stayed out front. Now, we've got lots of drivers, uh, lots of drivers on soft tyres, Jimmy. Uh, we're expecting them to use soft and medium. When are we expecting pit stops in this race? Yeah, of course, only one 
Oh, well, I'll come back to that in a second. Yeah, we have definitely. four cars all together. They're pretty much pushing each other down the straight at the moment. There is Rubelar behind there, uh, coming up behind his compatriot. Goes to the outside, though. As you get loosened out with the brakes, so Yamanaku sends them up the inside there in the Jaguar F-Pipe. Now looks to the inside of Mortillo oh. on the LC400. A little bit robust there from Yamanaku. We had come to expect that from the Japanese driver. He takes the place, and up the fourth, he goes down the fifth, goes Mortillo in the meet. In the meanwhile, Rubelar and Lakovsky are still side by side, and Hazal is just about to serve his penalty now. Tomowaki Yamanaka trying to pull off moves that I attempted in the commentator's race and went very wrong, but that fantastic driving from Yamanaka moves up a position. Yamanaka is on six points at the moment, so this a very good drive from him so far. Nicholas Rubelar and Lakovsky side by side through the tunnel. Rubelar just uh, grazing the wall there. He may have to defend as we approach uh, the hairpin. Lakovsky could look to the uh, outside here. Hizal has now served his penalty. Watch for him to come back into play. Let's see if we have any moves going on. Lakovsky does look to the outside, but I think he also aware of his hour behind Jimmy and uh, took the middle of the road. Oh, someone running Lopez. Lopez in. Lopez, Lopez going, in. He's gone into the pit lane straight away. He's starting the medium tyres. He's switching to the soft nice and early. Now, these are sport soft tyres he's going on, not racing soft tyres. So he's going to try and make those run until the end now, which is going to be a hell of an ask for those soft tyres. In comes from Wong as well. Now, you're going to have to see this is a very large undercut attempt from both Lopez and Wong. Whether it will pay off or not remains to be seen, especially around here. Being in the sip stream can definitely help more lap times. We look to talk with Phil Fraga has pulled a 2.5 second gap over his countryman, uh, Karatsa. Rashida in first with Yamanaka in fourth and Montilla and uh, Rubelar in fifth and sixth. So Brazilian, Brazilian, Japanese, Japanese, and then Chilean, Chilean. Uh, are your top six. Here is the fifth driver driver, Portier right now. A little bit of uh, oversteer there. Best way to get this car around the corner is a little bit of a slide. You're seeing a lot of drivers do that four-wheel sliding round here. Of course, not very much air on these cars. All about trying to get a little bit of zip angle to get around the corner in the fastest possible time. We've got a very close battle for second going on, and here it is, Karatsa and Yoshida. Yoshida looking to the outside of the Brazilian. At the moment, this would be a very good result for Karatsa, considering he is on five points. Uh, Yoshida Meanwhile, uh, he is currently on eight points, so this would reduce the deficit to Igor Fraga if he could get into second place and take the ten points that go along with it. Twelve points at the moment would be going to uh, Igor Fraga as they now come through the right-hander. They're approaching the tunnel, so we've got a leader out front, a battle for second, Yamanaka in a lonely fourth place. Cody Nikola Lakovsky has just picked up a penalty, the Australian. We're not too sure what that is for, but he is in a close battle with Nick Hizal and Fabian Bortier. Do Are we going to see anyone into the pits this time? Because we were told that three laps is probably perhaps the most you'll get out of the soft tyre. Oh, Karatsa getting very slow away there, maybe confirming what you were thinking there, Chris. The soft tyre is starting to go the other way. Let's see what Igor Fraga our leader. Fit lane there is on the left. No, he goes around one more time. Here comes Karatsa oh. and Rashida. They're both going to stay out. And that Ferrari F50 has got quite, uh, quite a bit of grunt there. V12 engine in the F50 right on the back of the Aston Martin DB11, old versus new. I know which one I'd go with if I had the money, but I definitely don't. <laughs> I was going to say, that's the new car, isn't it? Yeah, F50 yeah. is our new car. I've got seeing input there from Shogo Yoshida to the right of the screen and seeing both Karatsa and Yoshida work away. Well. Look at the different driving styles there. Karatsa really soaring at the wheel. Whereas Yoshida was saying that, now he's doing the same thing. Maybe that's the best way to drive this car right here. Karatsa's a little bit slow off the last corner, and here comes Yoshida, he'll drive past there with the momentum in the background, Yamanaka is still there as well. But that DB11 is holding on. They're going to go side by side all the way up the T1 now. Again, not really a straight up here. Yoshida looks like he just about has legs pulled ahead for now, but he's going to have to keep an eye on his mirror coming down to the hairpin. Yeah, Tomowaki Yamanaka is closing in. Lakovsky yet to serve his penalty. Nick Hazal should breeze past once that happens. Portia is seventh now. Lopez in 13th place is closing in. He's the first of the drivers to stop. Wong and Lam Law likewise. Let's go back to this battle because uh, Kadatsa there thought he was going to attempt to take that second place back from Yoshida. Have we had any changes further back? Well, let's see. That's Lakovsky. He runs a little bit wide. 
think that was on his own accord, and, how, and Hizal goes through to take fifth place. So Hizal on a recovery after an earlier penalty. He's back up to fifth, and then we have this battle for seventh going on between the likes of Portia, Rubala, uh, Sesquillo, and Mangano closing in as well. Mangano making his way up the field after starting right dead last up to P10. So a great drive from the Italian driver so far. We've seen him do this at, uh, in the other live events, such as Madrid, where he came from essentially last on the grid up to P2 for the end. Mick Hazau, importantly for his chances tonight, up to fifth position. He started 10th, so he's gained five places, has the German. Will he gain any higher? Here comes Igor Fraga. Now, will he peel over to the left-hand side on the course? Into the bit lane? No. Oh, Goes round wow. again. It's like the strategy here is to make the soft tyres last. Karatsa takes a very good hard look there at the back of the Ferrari, but doesn't go for the pass. And Hazau and Matkovsky back together again. These guys cannot be separated. Well, for any of our new, new viewers, uh, we'll come to the pit stops in a sec. Just to update you, the grid for the next race is set of the results of this race. So for someone like Cockyburn, this is a disaster because he won't have be having a bad race here. His next race will mean he has to start towards the back. Now, Jimmy, we have some pit stops going on there. We did, we had both Mangano and Susquillo come into the pit lane. So has Ryoto Kukibun, who's having a bit of a tough time with things out there at the moment, it has to be said. We'll focus on the battle right here, though, between, wow, Hizal touching the barrier with the rear end of that Porsche. That's how you drift, showing off there for the people at home. But that's not the fastest way round the track. Here comes Lukowski in that mighty McLaren F1. Look at it there, such an aggressive stance on that car. We come into the first left hand along. Let's see Hazel there. Hazel again sideways. Uh, the MR layout of that Porsche, or I guess it's pretty really, really rear end in that car, is improving a little bit too much. But here we go then, coming up to the hairpin. You know, Lukowski likes to uh, have a look when he can to the central seating position there. McLaren F1, one of its uh, highlights, I think. There is Mick Hazel on the right. Here comes Yamanaka on Yoshida. Up the inside, Yoshida's lost two positions. Oh, sorry, sorry, he was third. Oh. Apologies. And Yamanaka repeating the move he did earlier. Is he going to get two for one? No. Well, he attempted it, but uh, oh. Yamanaka there up to third place. So, brilliant driving this. He's absolutely flying. How is he? Managing these soft tyres so well, Jimmy, yet making places. Um, that is something that I would love to tell you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> but if I were out there doing it, I'd be uh, on the rim by now, I think. Uh, but here you are, we have Karatsa, Yamanaka, and Yoshida all coming towards the camera right now. There is Yoshida in the back of that glorious looking Ferrari F50. I must say, as I get a little bit older, I kind of like the F50 more and more. Um, very nice looking car indeed. Now again, Igor Surely. Fraga, seven seconds up the road from anybody else, doing what he does best, is putting away. Will we come to the pit no. lane? No, no, goes around again. Now a reminder, he does have to make one mandatory pit stop. He can use pretty much for that second of very, yep, he's coming in, so he's getting some new boots for that DB11. You can see it, the pit lane now is essentially an underground car park. So uh, make sure not to park your car in there on race weekend. Yeah, well, Karatsa uh, in and then back out again as quick as you like. Rublar has gone up to sixth place. Uh, also in was Fabian Portia. Uh, we've had uh, Gallant come in as well. Uh, so not yet to come in, of course, on the top six. Uh, plus, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Portia, I don't think, has stopped unless that's yet to be updated. But certainly the top six yet to come in. Here is Portia and Susquillo, nose to tail as they come to that long right hand and now and into the sharp left this a very quick section of the circuit mangano just ahead of us so whilst these guys are battling they're just allowing mangano to get away they're all on the same strategy uh, these guys they've all made one stop but mangano uh, seems to be pulling away right let's go back to mick hizal trl lightning he is closing in on latkovsky ahead of this though kishida and yamanaka Nose to tail as they go down under the bridge. They're approaching the double right-hander. Let's see if Yamanaka this time will be passed into this corner rather than overtake anyone. No, he hangs on to that place for now. So second place it is still for Yamanaka. Yoshida third, Lakovsky fourth. He's out then in fifth. Praga out front by now, eight seconds. What I love is we have a 2015 Jaguar being chased by a 1995 Ferrari. And 500 class, I always love it for that, of course. Some people have their criticisms, of course, but uh, in this event, I just really love the format. Looking back there from the Jaguar, looking 
back and seeing an F, uh, F50 uh, McLaren F1 car must be a little bit intimidating for Yamanaka, who of course did so well yesterday in the Manufacturers Cup, securing second place for Toyota. He'll be looking to go one better here today, but to do that, he's got to gain eight seconds at Igor Fraga, who is surely coming into the pit lane this time around. Yes, he does. Heels into the pit lane, only doing one lap on that medium tyre. Yeah, well. That's a bold strategy from Fraga, but I guess he made those tyres last, so uh, expertise shown from Igor Fraga there. That's why these guys are the best in the world. We've got Yoshida, Hidal, Yamanaka, Lakovsky, they're all coming in. Tyre strategy on screen. You can see why no one's picking the hard tyre, a lot slower than the rest. Everyone's in this last lap, really trying to make the best of the soft tyre. It's literally just a rush onto the medium tyre. Six laps. Some of these people were making these tyres last, and they were meant to only last three. Best of the best, who I can say. Five point rank in there to the right of screen. We've got Fraga now up to 22 points, Kadatsa 15, Yoshida 15, Yamanaka 14, Lopez 14. That is live, of course, and yet to be decided because we still uh, have this lap and uh, one more to go. Lopez on that soft tyre, he is in this queue. So he came into the pits very early, Jimmy, in attempt to do the undercut. That seems to be paying off at the moment. He's moving through the field and has a chance here if we go on to the final lap to move forward even more. Well, as we said at the start of this race, overtaking round here is quite difficult. But if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Jorge Lopez there in that Lamborghini Diablo in sixth position, just behind this car. Cody Lukowski in the McLaren F1. Rashida in front, eyeing up his countryman down into the heavy braking zone. I don't think he's going to try it right now, but Lukowski gaining, gaining, gaining on the brakes. Can almost reach out and touch the back of that F50. Looks up the inside of in contact with Rashida, who's just about keeping things under wraps. Look at that thing slide, Chris. Well, there we go, on board with Lakovsky. We came very close to passing Yoshida, but wasn't quite able to pull the move off. He's going to have that hairpin towards the end of the lap. It's not quite the last corner, but uh, it is right by the pit lane entry. Lakovsky, that will probably be his best chance here to go for the move. Fraga remains 7.6 seconds in the lead from Karatsa. Then it's Yamanaki, Yoshida and Lakovsky. But watch for Lopez as well on this final lap on those soft tyres. They may be worn, but they are, they should effectively still be quicker. Now this is going to be probably the last chance to overtake here. Coming down to the airpin, Lakovsky goes to the inside of Yoshida. It's going to be the latest of the late breakers to get that done. He goes up the inside, dives there. He's there on the inside, but he'll go wide on exit. He can't get the car slowed down. Understeers, here comes Lopez through as well. Will he get Lakovsky? McLaren versus Lamborghini Diablo Drag Race. Lakovsky does come out in front, keeping P5 for now, but Yoshida is given a moment of respite as our leader, Igor Fraga, is about to come round the last corner. So we'll keep an eye on that, but the battle's still raging for fourth and fifth position. And here comes Igor Fraga, does doing what he does best, leading from the front. Igor Fraga wins the first race of the FIA GT Championship Nations Cup World Final and is followed home by his countryman, Karatsa, in the DB11. Yamanaka in the third position. And Ragnar Lundakovsky has got ahead into fourth. Yoshida fifth. And Lopez just sick with Mick Hazal starting from tenth and finishing in seventh position. Giorgio Mangolo, who started last up to eight, a great effort from the Italian driver. Well, his hour could have been better without that earlier penalty. Mangano moves up to eight. There's Igor Fraga. He knows the job is far from done yet. He may have won this first race, but there is still three races to go, including the double points one at the end. So Igor Fraga, that's, I think, why there is uh, no celebrations from him just yet. But uh, a fantastic race. There you go. That is Tokyo Expressway South in a loop. What do you think of it? Good I think it provided good racing, right? Two major, major overtaking opportunities. Uh, and it did prove out that these guys can make that soft tyre work you know, make it last for a long time. Well, that was a big surprise for me, Chris, actually seeing that soft tyre go that long. Again, some people, six laps, and it doubled the length of what we saw happening up. Now, we do have some replays coming up on screen. There is Fabian Portia in the car right now. You see going wide at the start of the race. Yamanaka sliding up the inside of Jacobus. Hasn't been able to invite him twice, and that kind of left him 
Uh, the door opens, Blackkovsky behind it couldn't quite make it work. There is Yoshida looking quite worried, actually. Uh, but I think this is his driving face. <laughs> yeah, that was Yoshida. I think that was uh, him when he was about to try and make this move on Kadatsa. But uh, that wasn't to pay off at that moment in time. But the two did remain side by side. And uh, Yoshida would eventually get through into second place. Whilst all this was going on, Yamanaka was closing in. Behind Latkovsky was falling back at the expense of Mick Hizau and uh, I think we're going to see a frustrated Latkovsky are we? Oh no, actually remained very calm despite what was going on around him and then this was his attempted move on Yoshida which just didn't quite work out. It would have been very easy for him to turn Yoshida there but backed out of it and here was the last lap lunge down to the hairpin, understeer there, front tyres didn't quite have enough grip there. At this point Latkovsky was down to fifth but he managed to actually claw it back and get past Yoshida before coming over the start finish line. That was Fraga of course, and a sigh of relief from the Brazilian. But as you said, Chris, long way to go for him. Yep, we've still got three races uh, yet to go. Uh, we're going to have a look at the standings in just a second to give you an idea of who is on what points because we've ha already had points coming into this. Uh, that's confirmation of race one results. So Fraga takes 12 points in the win. Then it's Karatsi, Yamanaka, Latkovsky, Yoshida, Lopez, Hizal, Mangano with three points. Then we had Portia and Sasquillo, two and one point respectively. Missing out on points, some big names in Kokobun, Galen Wong. And then we had Latlong, Fraga uh, and, well, Fraga, that's Patrick Blasham, sorry and uh, Nicholas Rubelar. So uh, some big names towards the back of the field there, actually. Uh, that means now that they're gonna have to start at the back for the next race as well. So that's making their chances of winning this very, very slim, I think, because Fraga is already getting away on points. Yeah, definitely a difficult, uh, difficult uh, race ahead for the guys at the back, but let's start with Julia. See her thoughts in the race. Wow, it's like they, how they just knew something we didn't. Honestly, that tyre strategy was, was just incredible. Um, we were asking you guys at home on socials just exactly what car you'll be taking to this new track uh, once it's released in December. And we've got a little bit of feedback from there. So uh, definitely the Lexus LC500. It's a great tour and to take to the city courses. I could take your word for it. And uh, we've got Jose Gel at Sejlan. And uh, we've got, I've been falling in love with the Toyota SFR Racing Concept 16. That will probably be the very first car that I use. I always find it's very distracting when you play like a new track like that because you're kind of constantly like looking around and I'm just easily distracted by nice buildings. That's just me though. Um, so uh, keep the questions coming in using the hashtag FIA GTC and GT Sport. We'll uh, have some more of those a little bit later on. Now, um, we had a very special guest come and join us for a little bit. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know, someone, I don't know, a couple of you might know him, Lewis Hamilton. I don't know, I don't know that guy. But uh, obviously our race leader at the moment, Igor Fraga, actually got to ask him a question. So let's find out what he had to say. A warm welcome, please, to the five-time Formula One world champion and the Gran Turismo sport maestro, Lewis Hamilton. I wanted to know, like, if you also had a time that you wanted to quit like motorsport or what makes you like keep going? Yeah, good question. Karting was difficult for us because we were the only black family there. There was definitely a lot of hate, a lot of negativity that came our way, but we just, my dad just always said, do you talking on the track? So naturally I'm a fighter, but there were times, particularly when I got to cars, my first three or four races at least, I crashed and damaged the car and I can't afford to keep making mistakes. I might not have any more chances left. And I woke up in the morning and I went for the longest run that I'd ever done. I felt great. And during that run, it cleared my mind. I won the next race. There are times that you feel that you, there's just no solution around the issue. The easiest thing is to give up, but there's always light over the hill, you know? So you just gotta just never give up whatever you're targeting realistically. Um, I think that you can reach. And so that's how it's kind of been through the different times throughout my career. I have to say, there was a kind of gasp as he walked in the room. Yeah, it was a bit of a badly kept secret, really, that he was coming. <laughs> I think a few of the guys maybe knew that he was here, but uh, it was such an honor for everybody. And, and so exciting, you know, all these guys obviously look up to Lewis. He is now the Gran Turismo maestro as well. He has a direct involvement in the game, which is a game that he's played since he was a kid. And he was just as excited to be here as the guys, honestly. He, he really How enjoyed himself. He did. That he was here. Pardon? How excited were you that he was I here? I was really excited. Yeah, and do you know what? He was a lovely guy as well. You know, everybody has an image, don't they? And um, 
so, so, you know, everybody kind of has their opinions, but he was such a nice guy. He wanted to stay here and talk to the guys for longer than the, the time that we had available. Uh, he was an absolute pleasure, honestly. Oh, that's amazing. Well, yes. OK, we are on to our next race in just a few moments. Uh, I believe, Matt, you had a chat with Fraga about our next particular track, which is the Autodromo de Interlagos. Yes. Uh, let's find out what he had to say. Ready for Interlagos is our America's champion, Igor Fraga. And Igor, as a Brazilian, your home circuit and a place actually you've raced in real life too. What's it like? Um, it's like very similar to, uh, you know, to the real life track. And it's very, very interesting because, you know, you have the trees, you have the building that is kind of the same place. So it's very, very interesting. And uh, I have always a lot of fun driving there. What experience from driving the real circuit can you take into the game and, and vice versa when you drive the game and you go there? I think the base, it's kind of the same, you know, the lines, but, uh, you know, you have to do tiny adjustment. It's not like exactly the same, but it's very interesting because you, you keep your mind open and it kind of helps to the both worlds. Like the real kind of help a little bit on the virtual and sometimes the virtual helps a little bit on the real world too. So coming from the real to the virtual for our guys and girls who are watching at home, what, what tips can you give them? What's the key areas to this track? Uh, I believe that the Interlagos have a lot of keys. It's a very technical track, but especially on the first S of Senna, you know, the second turn there, you have to have like a very good exit because you have a quite long straightaway uh, going to Curva do Lago. And then you have the second sector, you know, the, the slow section that you have the flow there. It's, uh, you know, it's always connected. So you have to think further and uh, sometimes prioritize the, the next corner. And uh, it's, it's a very technical track that I love. Well, from all the comments that we're getting on the live streams, we know you've got lots of fans out there, Igor. And I'm sure they're going to be supporting you at Interlagos. So good luck. Thank you so all much. And thank you guys for watching too. Yeah, he's going to be a man to beat, isn't he, around Interlagos, also known as the Autodromo José Carlos Pachi, named after the late Brazilian F1 driver, winner there in 1975. Built in the 1930s on land initially, designated for housing until the big stock market crash of 1929. There's something you didn't know. Yeah, with a layout based on New York's Roosevelt Field Raceway and the home of Formula One since 1972. 14 times tire wear, and as Igor said there, it's fast and it's flowing in sections. You've got to think a couple of corners ahead, which is one of the tips that Lewis was giving the guys, actually, when he was here the other day. Now, the drivers have to use at least two types of tires, so we could see some very different strategies here with some of the guys now, as we've seen after that first race. They're at the point of the competition where, really, this could be the time to take a gamble. Easier said than done, though, isn't it? It's all right for us to sit here saying, oh, I think the guys should take a gamble, but uh, we're going to ask you that question, and uh, we don't have to answer it, Julia, don't worry. Good. The guys at home, we want to hear from you. What's your tyre strategy? Which tyre would you race first? Uh, send us your thoughts uh, and your answers using the hashtag FIA GT, C, uh, GTC and uh, hashtag GT Sport. Yeah, let us know because we need some help. Although it'll be a bit late for these guys, they will be well into the race, but there we are. Um, talk to us a little bit about the cars for this one, Matt. Uh, yeah, sure. Cars are uh, Group 3, uh, so all rear wheel drive. Uh, look out for the car here that won the Manufacturer Series yesterday, the Lexus RCF, and that's going to be in the hands of Patrick Blajan. So, um, yeah, look out for Patrick in that one. Uh, Mikhail Hizal, we've seen that he's got some work to do. He's in the Audi R8. Uh, a car that uses the tyres quite hard, so it's a big challenge for him once again. He might need a, a clever strategy on the tyres. And uh, Galan, uh, the, uh, the Canadian, yeah. disappointed a little bit in uh, the first uh, race, uh, but he's in the Atenza, so uh, one to watch here. These Group 3 cars, as you can see, fully fledged uh, race cars, just slightly bigger on the, on the aerodynamics and some other tweaks as well. I think you need to stop picking races at the start. I know, I keep you, cursing them. You're like cursing them <laughs> yeah. every single time. They don't do well. The pressure of having yeah. you to look at them, Matt. Stop it. Oh, well, let's kick off this second Sorry. race now. Don't pick one this time, and we'll see how better they do. Uh, let's chuck over to our commentators now. Well, race two, of course, will be at Interlagos, as we heard there. Good to hear the thoughts of Igor Fraga as well. Uh, we're going to have a look at the standings because we've had now a semi-final repercharge and the first race. So we've had accumulative points scored uh, throughout all of those. Let's have a look at who is where. Igor Fraga leading the way with 22 points. Kratz a second with 15. Very close battle it is for a second. Yamanaka, Yoshida, Lopez and Hizal all on 14 points. Then it's Latkovsky and Portia rounding out the top eight. Out of the top eight, it's Kokibun, Galan, Wong, Law, Mangano, Flash. 
Bashan, then it's Rubelar and Sesuilo at the back of the field. Uh, Jimmy, what's, what's your thoughts ahead of uh, this one? Of course, Eagle Frog is going to be difficult to beat after the performance we saw in Las Vegas when we were driving around this very circuit. Well, yeah, of course, as you heard, uh, Igor has driven here in real life, so has a little bit of an advantage over the rest of the drivers. Um, but very fast guy, again, loves to lead from the front. And where's he starting? Front of the grid. So we'll see what happens. There we go. We will find out very shortly. I think it's fair to say race two. It is time to get going. Inter Lagos Group 3 cars. It's going to be a nine-lap race. Uh, they have to use all three compounds of tyres as well. Jimmy, why don't you take us through the grid for this one? Good my pleasure, Chris. Starting on pole position is that man, Igor Fraga, in at the Jaguar F-Type. We'll be able to lead from the front like he did in Vegas. Second is Karatsa in the NSX, another car that's half of his tyres. In third is Yamanaka in the M6 GT3. Then down the fourth is Cody Lukowski starting in the V12 Vantage. In fifth position, Shobu Yoshida in that beautiful Alfa Romeo 4C. Then back down to Sif, Jorge Lopez in the Porsche 911 RSR. Seventh is our European regional uh, final champion, Mick Hazel in the Audi R8, to see if he can manage his tyres. Giorgio Mango looking to work his way further up the field in eighth position with the AMG. Then Portilla in ninth with the Corvette C7. Down in tenth is Adam Susquillo in the Mustang Group 3 car. 11th is Patrick Bajan, not really used to seeing him that far down. Hopefully, for his sake, he can make up a couple of places. In 12th is Jeff Gallon in the, the Mazda Atenza. And in 13th, it is Nico Rubilar in the Supra. Then we go to Jonathan Wong from Hong Kong in the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 car. Then it's Jack Lam Law uh, in 15th in the Nissan GTR. Then down 16th from last is Yoto Kogubun. He's got a lot to do in the McLaren 650S. Well, in practice earlier, Gallon was actually quickest from Blashan and Susuilo, and they are all out of the top, well, 10th, 11th, and 12th, respectively. So do watch out for those guys. Uh, cars to watch out for from the drivers I spoke to earlier said, uh, watch out for the Atenzo in the hands of Gallon, the Mustang uh, with Susuilo, and the BMW with Yamanaka there from third place as well. But this is now race two, more points to be scored ahead of that world final title so here we go two brazilians leading the way at interlagos and on pole position is igor fraga the points leader in the nation's cup world final at the moment it's going to be a nine lap race as we said all three tire compounds must be used in this one let's get ready to go racing for the second time here on grand finals day we wait for the countdown and then we go racing. There it is. And Igor Fraga leads us down towards turn number one for the first time of nine. Let's hope for a clean start. The top four all on soft tyres. And then Shogo Yoshida has gone for the medium. Rubel Wong and Let Yat Lam Law have gone for hard tyres towards the back. But do we have any instincts? I don't think we do. No penalties either. So looks like it's been a nice and clean start. The two Brazilians heading down towards turn number four. Fraga leading Karatsa, then Yamanaka there in third. Karatsa trying to make himself big in the mirrors of Igor Fraga here on lap number one, but Igor Fraga not, uh, not feeling the pressure at all as he leads us down towards turn number six for the first time. At the moment, Lopez and Mangano have both moved up from their grid positions. Zankowski in fourth at the moment. Here is Fraga. If anyone's going to pounce on Igor Fraga, it needs to be soon. We know the Brazilian driver likes to leave the front. Look for the middle sector. Look at Karatsa really harrying the Jaguar F up the top four drivers uh, separated by less than a second right now coming through this tricky middle section here on Interlagos it's all about being very patient with the throttle something Chris isn't very good at unfortunately <laughs> make their way down the long left hander and then coming up the awkward break in this last corner always catches me out I'm not very good at this one uh, and we then try and bring it all the way to the curb and uphill all about power now and Igor Fraga has managed to extend his gap from two nearly nine tenths of a second 
Meanwhile, Yamanaka all over the back of Karatsa. Let's see if a Japanese driver can get by. Yeah, let's see down at turn number one. Lakovsky looking to take advantage, I think, here as well. Yamanaka's going to try the outside, and Lakovsky's going to try and go on the inside of the pair of them. And is he going to make the move? Well, he's into third. Can he go through to second? He can't. So Yamanaka up to second. Lakovsky, what a fantastic move. Grates the wall almost on his way through, but he is third. Karatsa losing out big time. He's now down to fourth place, and Lakovsky is not done with this yet. He looks to the outside of Yamanaka here. They're just making a little bit of contact as they go into the breaking area for Tokov. Oh! oh! Contact there, Lak uh, Karatsa being caught out from a slowing Lakovsky. So Lakovsky there at T1, I think. I don't think Karatsa knew he was there. He was right on the wall. Now Lakovsky looks to the inside of Yamanaka, actually, coming in the long right-hander. Is he going to do it? He is late on the brakes into the middle section. Cody Lakovsky up into second position. What a drive by the Australian driver. This fantastic stuff from Lakovsky. Of course, I oh, want to watch if you watched our little preview earlier. Igor Fraga, meanwhile, this is helping him break away out front once again. What is he doing? He's qualifying at the front, he's finishing at the front, and he's letting everyone else dispute second place while he just pulls away. So these guys now need to decide who's going to lead the charge, and they need to somehow work together because Igor Fraga is already two seconds in the distance for the Patrick Blasher. And we said he could be one to watch. He's trying to close down Mangano, but of course he's only gone past those on medium or hard tyre at the moment. So our top seven all on soft tyres. Here now we're on board with Lakovsky. It's Yamanaka there, had the run, but actually slowed himself down coming on the back. And here comes Lopez on the inside of Karatsa, not quite close enough. The NSX getting sideways, coming down T1 through the centre S, now through T3. The right front tyre takes that battering through here. Now, as to reiterate what you said, Chris, these guys have to work together, otherwise Igor Fraga is just going to drive away with it again. When you're fighting and jostling the position, all you're doing is losing lap time, and Lakovsky goes a little bit wide, and Yamalaka goes, OK, I'm going to go for the move now, and he goes up to second place, Lakovsky is pushed wide, not much time lost between them, but you see it was 2.2, and now it's 2.4 seconds to Igor Fraga. Every move is slowing him down. Meanwhile, the background, Lopez, moves up the fourth, taking Carranza, Lopez is really determined to get up this scrap. Maybe he wants a chance at chasing Igor Fraga. I can almost hear the Spanish commentators from here as Jorge Lopez goes into fourth place then. Another thing this is helping Igor Fraga do is manage his tyres. Of course, Yamanaka and Lakovsky, this won't be doing their soft tyres any good at all. What we had uh, from, uh, from our briefing earlier was that it could be three laps to tyre window on the softs, but of course that was completely thrown out the window in race number one. There is Mangano uh, in the Mercedes. Oh, and a little bit of a moment coming out of turn number 12 there as he's in the toe of Karatsa. Can Mangano make a move as they head now down towards turn number one? Patrick Blashan just behind as well. Mangano pulls to the outside in that Mercedes. Is he going to be brave and attempt to go all the way around the outside? Meanwhile, Blashan is trying to Cody Lakovsky and then three wide and Mangano comes out in fifth place and Blashan Oh, a little bit of more contact there. He's briefly onto the grass. Blashan and Karatsa not done oh. with each other yet. They're drifting oh. through turn three. And Blashan is up to six. Karatsa, nightmare race so far for him. That looked a little bit uh, argy-bargy for me. I think that Blashan got a little bit frustrated with Karatsa and maybe leaned on him going through T3. Unfortunately, our camera angle wasn't the best, so we can't really confirm that again. That Koski and Yamanaka are still going at it. And in the top right, you can see Karatsa and Blashan now under investigation. Uh, but yeah, uh, Karatsa has just been working his way down the field. Started in second place, is now down to eight. So. Yamanaka, Lakovsky, Lopez, all in your pitch at the moment. Yamanaka sideways again. See, so getting a little bit impatient on that project through there. And Jorge Lopez behind in the Porsche 911 RSR, getting ever closer to the back of Cody Lakovsky. Well, all this battling has allowed those on medium tyres to close in here. Here is Lopez. He's going to dive to the inside of Lakovsky. Is the move going to be completed? It was in the background. No, I don't think it was. Let's see. No, Lopez still in fourth place for the time being, but he certainly was thinking about a move. Are we going to see any stops on this lap? Igor Fraga is coming in to the pits. Now, are we going to see all drive drivers on the softs come in? Let's see. Yamanaka is in. Lopez is in. Lakovsky in. Yes, I think pretty much all of the guys on soft tyres have come into the pits, which means Yoshida now leads from Portia, Gallan and Rubelar. 
see how this pans out. Here comes Eagle Frog, have long pit exit around here. And now Yoshida, you see up in the two first and the Alpha Force. See, there is a car strategy in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, as we expected. Well, actually, they went a little bit further on the racing socks than we expected they would do. Three laps, four laps, still three. Not too much time difference between these tyres, but the hards being 1.7 seconds slower than the medium. And there is Igor Fraga. He's come back out in traffic uh, behind Nico Rubelard. Look at Yamanaka now. The gap was about 2.2 seconds oh, when it came nice. to the pit lane. Now he's right on the back. It's going to be a case of who can get past Rubelard first. Fra Fraga already passed. Rubelard goes very wide there coming up the hill. Yamanaka follows him through, so Yamanaka has put himself in a great position at the moment. Yeah, this is really good stuff, and that was a good spot there. Uh, Gallon, now he's having a bit of an argy-bargy with uh, Portia, and that's allowed Fraga and Yamanaka to close in. It's also allowed Yoshida to pull away out front, and Fraga trying to look up the inside of Portia there. There may have been the slightest bit of contact. Fraga now trying to go round the outside at turn number 11. Yamanaka follows him through as they now head up towards T12. Are we going to see any moves there? No, Fraga not close enough, but could get the run down the straight and towards the pit lane Yoshida out front on those medium tyres how long is he going to stay out for he's going to bail into the pits now we'll probably expect Gallon and Portia to do the same Rubelas should stay out a bit longer okay, Yoshida is going to go for the hard tyre probably run about a lap on that come back in and bolt on the soft and go for a fast finish so everyone diving into pit lane now here is our all down the front Fraga Yamanaka look how close the Japanese driver is to Igor Fraga he's not used to seeing anyone in this mirror here at Interlagos but he's been really harried by Yamanaka in that BMW M6 and not too far away in the background is Cody Lutkowski as well. Again, we, we said uh, Cody would be one to watch. He really has been on a great show here. Eagle Fraga going defensive nice and early. Not sure he really needed to do that. That's going to slow him down on exit. Now here comes Yamanaka. The gap is now less than two tenths of a second. Yamanaka, uh, Yamanaka sorry, looking to Don't the outside. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to fall over this time. I'm looking to the outside of T6, but not quite close enough to do anything. The Eagle Fraga really feeling the pressure now. Well, there you can see the rankings of Fraga and Yamanaka. So this is a real, really crucial battle in terms of the overall championship here between Fraga and Yamanaka. Now, we've not really in this whole series actually seen Igor Fraga challenged for the lead. How is he going to deal with this pressure? Because he's not only got Yamanaka behind, he's got Lakovsky and Lopez also closing in as well. So it could be a four-way scrap for the lead here. They'll probably bail into the pits right at the end and come out on the hard tyre for one lap, do you think? Yeah, that, that is definitely uh, a uh, possibility. I think maybe it's all Fraga about right now. He, he wanted to the hard tyre at least as possible. There are some live point scannings with the race finished as it was. Igor Fraga would have a 10 point lead at the top of the standings. And bear in mind, we still have a couple of races left, including one double point race for half finale. So it's far from over, even if things finish now. But if Yamanaka has anything to say about it, I think we're still in for a bit more action, Chris. Let's keep an eye on the gap between second and third. You can see Yamanaka to the bottom left of your screen, I think. Perhaps just checking to see uh, how far behind Lakovsky was. It is 1.4 seconds back to Lakovsky and Lopez at the moment. Let's go through some of the rest of the order. Blashan, Susquillo, Kadatsa, Hizal, Gallen and Yoshida around at the top ten. We've got a change for eighth with Gallen uh, going past Hizal. So at this note, to look down the screen here, looking at pit stops, and Giorgio Mangano down in 14th position has already pitted twice, so he doesn't need to pit again. The entire rest of the field does. Now, I don't think it'll be enough for him to come up in the contention with the leaders, but I have been proved wrong before, so we'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, in the background, the time pace of Tia overtaking Rashida, and there is Igor Fraga right now being kept very honest by the Japanese driver. Here is your battle for third, Lakovsky and Lopez making their way down the hill once more. Now, we know the B12 Vantage historically has been fairly decent in the straight line, but Lopez is going to have the flip stream, so we might see a move come into T1 here. So Lopez now glued to the rear spoiler of the Aston Martin B12 Vantage. It's the time coming down ever so slightly due to the sit beam. Now we're on board, going up into fifth will be in sit gear there, 260 k's, look to the inside. How late on the brakes do you want to be? Late enough, goes to the inside, the first part of Senna and gets it done nice and easily. Lakovsky still hanging on to the inside, but he's not going to be close enough. Now it's his turn, it's a long run down to T4. Lakovsky might be able to switch back. You know what, I think Lakovsky knows that Lopez is quicker here. 
and he wants to put, I think, to just drag him up to the levers because Ladkovsky would usually defend that place. He didn't, and he didn't fight it too hard on the exit either. So, Lopez, let's see now what you can do. You've got a couple of laps. Can you take us up to the back of the fight for the lead? Because they are fighting out front, and if they continue to do so, Lopez and Lakovsky could get involved, and it could make for a four-way scrap. Patrick Blashan really closing in as well. He was once 2.3 seconds back from the battle for third. He's now only eight tenths of a second. So the Hungarian on a recovery in terms of his overall championship fight here. Here is Fraga and Yamanaka as they come now through turn number. 11. It's 150 beats per minute, so Igor Fraga definitely feeling the strain of the Japanese driver bearing in behind. Now we'll see them might be peel into the pit lane again. Two stops need to be made during this race, and he can use every compound of tyres, and everyone who currently has a one next to their name has not. So we're going to see a flurry of pit stops now, and that will be pretty much a sprint to the end from there. Although saying that, they're going round again. Is there only two, two tyres on this? Set it's for three on our, on our street. Have we missed something? So, unless that's a change, who knows? Uh, I'm sure Jimmy will get on the case, but uh, uh, Fraga and Yamanaka now come round uh, turn number three and up towards turn number four. Lopez 1.7 seconds back from Fraga and Yamanaka now as they head up towards turn number four. Yamanaka looking to the outside. This is the last lap of race number two, and Yamanaka going for the switchback. Here on Igor Fraga, they're going to be side by side now, heading up towards turn number six. Oh, a bit of contact. Fraga's up on the grass. Yamanaka to the outside. Oh, and they're bumping wheels once more, and Lopez gets closer and closer. Yamanaka now takes the lead. Oh, and Fraga dives back to the inside. Yamanaka's still in the lead for the time being, but here comes Lopez, dives down the inside of Fraga. Can he get second place? No, he can't. This is going to be a grandstand finish, Jimmy. Well, we'll see what the stewards have to say about that, and we'll forget about pit stops for now. Igor Fraga having to defend heavily from Lopez, who's going to run it round the outside, going down the hill. He's got a car in there, he's got a car with on him. He'll be on the inside now for this corner, and the next one, Lopez moves up to second place. Fraga goes from third to first. In one lap, Fraga has been left out to dry. And look in the background, Cody Lukowski wants some of this as well. Igor Fraga is going to lose another position. He's look at the good left. There he is, Lukowski's pass as well. Yeah. So Fraga goes down from first to fourth place. He might be able to get something back on the line, but it'll be Yamanaka who comes back and wins. Yamanaka wins. Let's see what our Spaniards think of this, shall we? Okay, well, maybe not. We'll come back to us. And here is your final standings. Yamanaka takes race victory in an absolutely intense last lap from Jorge Lopez, who manages second. Cody Lukowski takes third. And of course, Igor Fraga demoted to fourth position. Chris, thoughts? Well, there was 10 points between our top two. That could now come down. And of course, third place, Yamanaka is going to close in as well. Well, we did say uh, during that race, we have not seen Igor Fraga in a pressure situation. I don't think throughout the whole championship, certainly not at the live events anyway. And there he just seemed to go through his tires too much. Either that or he just lost one place and then lost momentum. Let's look back at the race. Jimmy, why don't you talk us through the replay? That is Karatsa there at the start of the race. You see Yamanaka early on making the move, but Lukowski going up the inside of both of them. A fantastic move there by the Australian driver. Eventually came out third though, and Yamanaka holding second for now. Here was Lukowski and Yamanaka. You see in the background, Karatsa just drove into the back of Lukowski. Luckily, no time lost there, but big jolt in the wheel there and well held by the Australian driver. The battle didn't end there, though. Lukowski was determined to stay with Yamanaka and actually got back past the Japanese driver. But then again, next lap, Yamanaka, as uh, uh, industrious as he is, passed up into second position. Yep, that was a brave move all the way around the outside. And then this was Lopez as he started to get involved. I could feel the desk shaking. That was coming all the way down from the Spaniards as Lopez went into third. And we did say if these guys kept battling, someone was going to catch him and it was going to be Jorge Lopez. That was when they made slight contact. Fraga onto the grass. Yamanaka as a Fraga rejoined. They made contact, but Yamanaka got the switch back, went into the lead, somehow got the car stopped going into turn eight. Then here came Lopez through turn 11. 
kept Fraga to the outside and Lopez went through and Fraga unfortunately was going to drop even more places because there came Cody Lakovsky through Yamanaka it was out front took victory there you can see Yamanaka that's what it meant to him he would have known Fraga was down in four and he knows that is a big big moment in this event. Yeah, very Yamanaka-esque result then. Here are our standings, or our race results, I should say. Yamanaka taking the full 12 points, Lopez 10, Lakovsky 8, and Igor Fraga losing out 5 points in the last up to 7. Patrick Blachan takes 6 points, Jeff Gallon with 5, and here are the rest of here. We have Shogun Yoshida on 2, Mangano on 1, and here are the guys at the bottom with none. So we're going to toss over to Julia with an interview. Hello, Julia. Well, I mean, I'm here, but it's not really about me. This is with Ty Ramon, who's the winner of the Manufacturer Series for Lexus yesterday. So uh, how are you? This must be quite nice. Is it quite relaxing for you? You can just chill out, watch everyone else get really stressed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, after watching that race, that's it's pretty intense, and it's nice to not have to be worrying about that right now. I mean, the last little bit of that lap, we were both kind of losing it a little bit. That's pretty shocking, huh? Yeah, I mean, to see some of the best drivers in the world battle it out and um, Yaman you know, Yamanaka being patient, waiting and executing when he needed to. And it's really impressive to watch these guys battle it out. I mean, how do you think it's going to affect Fraga from this point on? What do you reckon? If that was you, how would you deal with that? I mean, he's, he's a professional driver. You know, he deals with the pressure all the time. Um, he's just got to, you know, keep his head down, battle it out and, and finish to the end. It's, you know, still got a couple more races to go. So, um, I mean... Now that you're kind of hanging out and kind of watching it from the other side, um, what, what's your best advice to everyone who's up on that stage now? Come on, you know, you're the, you're the champion already. They want to be a champion. What's your top tip? Uh, just enjoy yourself. Have fun. I mean, we're all here for the same reason. We all want to enjoy you know, the racing, and it's very competitive. But uh, just have fun at the end of the day. And, um, you know, it's anyone's game. He's just way too chill about everything. It was like this yesterday, right after he won. It was just like, yeah, you know, it's cool. Just doing some driving, whatever. But no, but that's maybe the key to being a champion. So thank you so much for chatting to us, Tara. That's great. Uh, let's take a quick look at the schedule, what's coming up for the rest of today. We're about halfway through. Uh, so yeah, we've got race three coming up. And then, of course, the final race as well. But don't forget, it's double points. So still everything to play for. Let's see if your fragger can uh, you know, pull it back. Um, let's take a look at the next track that they're going to be racing on. Who better to tell us about our next circuit, Monza, than the only Italian in the final, Giorgio Mangano. Giorgio, you must be excited to have your home track in the final. Yes, of course, uh, I'm excited. It's uh, my own track. I, I've been there and uh, I loved it. Of course, it's not the track where you can escape, but uh, of course, there are uh, a lot of straights where you can have uh, battles and uh, overtakes. But, but it makes it difficult, like you say, for, for you guys to actually make the difference. Yes, uh, even uh, the slowest guys, uh, they can catch up with the slip through. So it's difficult, as I said, to, to escape and uh, take uh, the pace. One thing we saw in the semi-finals was how critical the tire wear can be. What's it like at Monza? I'm guessing with the long straights, not too uh, bad. Yeah, Monza is not the track where you wear a lot of the tires because of the straights and uh, the corners are uh, very slow. So you can't wear the tire a lot. Well, listen, Giorgio, I'm sure there's lots of Italian fans watching at home. but wishing you the best at Monza. Good Thank luck. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, really historic racetrack, another one. Located near the city of Monza, north of Milan, built in 1922. It holds the distinction of being the world's third purpose-built motor racing circuit after Brooklyn's in the UK and Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the USA. This is the 5.755 Grand Prix layout without the chicane on the front straight. So as Giorgio said there, fast, long straights and relatively slow corners that don't ordinarily wear tires too bad. But this is Gran Turismo. So in terms of tyre strategy, uh, the race here, the boys are going to have to contend with 14 times tyre wear. And again, they must use two or more options. However, look at that. Only 0.6 seconds difference between the medium uh, and the soft tyre. So a uh, bit of a tricky one for the boys to choose in terms of tyres. Now, as we said at the very top of the show, if you missed it, uh, in these Nations Cup races, the guys get allocated their cars. The cars for our third race here are Group 1 and something for everybody, really, in this group. Bit of a mixture. Uh, something for all ages, I think it's fair to say. We've got the LMP1 cars, the top class at Le Mans. 
cars like the uh, 919 Hybrid, which uh, you might have seen earlier on. It's in the lobby here, uh, driven by Brandon, uh, Brendan Hartley. Some older uh, Group C cars from the 80s and 90s, like the Mazda 787B. Uh, very little downforce, but high on top speed. And mixed in there, we've got some Gran Turismo Visions, like the McLaren and the Audi Vision here. Um, which we've got in the arena actually, just over there. And uh, some non-hybrid cars as well, like the Peugeot uh, 908, which uh, lacks a little bit of the acceleration compared to the hybrid, but plenty of top speed as well. So lots of interest in this one. The racing is ramping up again. Let's go back to Chris and Jimmy. Thank you, Matt. Well, I think it's time to actually look at how the points now look, because that was a big, big race, as we said. That could be a very pivotal moment in who walks away the champion today, of course, the inaugural uh, champion. So why don't we take a look at the points, who is sitting where. I'm sure, Jimmy, you can help me talk us through this because we did score points in that race, and here they are. So you can see there, Igor Fraga's lead comes right down to three points. Yamanaka up to second, Lopez third now, Vakovsky still there in fourth position. Mick Hazel needs to really get a move on down in fifth. Rashida sixth, Karatsa seventh, and Jeff Gallen in eighth. Then a bit further down the field, we have Patrick Blajan in ninth with 11 points. Portia and Kukubon both with nine. Kukubon a lot lower than we thought he would be. Wong is in 12th. Pasquillo 13th. Mangalo 14th. Raw 15th. And Nico Rubelar right down the bottom with only three points. Right, so we've got group one out next with Monza No Chicane. You tested this track earlier. I saw you having a go just trying to, you know, get to grips and get used to what these guys are about to face. Uh, what did you make of the track? What car were you in? I was in the Group C Nissan, so a very fast car. Not quite that quick out of the corners, but on the top speed-wise, absolute rocket. You're doing 340 k before breaking for the first chicane. Absolutely insane. Looking forward to seeing it in action. Well, this is going to be a fantastic race. Race number three. More points to be scored. Of course, having won that second race, Going off pole position will be Tomoaki Yamanaka, now up to second in the point standings. Jorge Lopez will start in second place, starting from third and potentially with a pretty good car here. Cody Latkowski was told by some drivers that car should go very well. Igor Fraga starts in fourth place, having lost pole position at Interlagos. Uh, Patrick Blashan is then in fifth. Big mover in the last race, definitely watch for him in this one. Uh, Jeffrey Gallant goes off sixth place and sitting eighth in the standings at the moment. Adam Susquillo is 13th, but moved forward well last time. Let's see if he can progress on that this time. Mick Hazel, as Jimmy said, needs to get a move on. Fifth at the moment, he starts eighth place. Shogo Yoshida is sixth overall at the moment, and he is ninth place in the Toyota. Then it is Giorgio Mangano on home soil. Tenth place for him on the grid. Carazzo starts in 11th place. Disappointing second race. Let's see if he can make some ground in this one. Ryoto Kokipan really, really struggling today. The Asia Oceana Regional Final Champion. Likewise, Nicholas Rubelar rounds out the field in terms of the points. 13th needs to do something special. Likewise, Fabian Portia, who starts from 14th. Jonathan Wong starts in 15th place. Not the day uh, for him we, ex uh, we expected. And then rounding out the field, it is Yap Lam Law, 15th in the points for him at the moment. So we've gone pretty split on tyres here, half on softs, half on mediums, pretty much. Top five all on softs, Jeff Gallen, the first of the medium tyre runners. Well, Jimmy, it's going to be a 10-lap race. Why don't you talk us through the start? Monza, no chicane. No chicane is the big detail here. <laughs> With the chicane, I very much fancy myself with a hybrid car around here. But taking the chicane out, cars like the Group C cars, the Mazda 787B, the Salva C9, the Nissan R92 there. They're all going to be very, very quick in terms of top end. And not having a the chicane there means they can really use that down the straight. Now, the hybrids are going to be fully charged on the first lap. So expect to see them shoot away, but then be drawn back in by the cars behind. Yamanaka, sorry, will lead us away in that glorious Audi R18, the uh, the diesel tractor, we call it, back on my own channel. And here we go then, three, two, one, and here we go at Monza for race three of the FIA GT Championship World Final. Look at the hybrid, Yamanaka streaks away in the Audi R18, down towards where the first chicane would be. In the background, Lopez is already 1.5 seconds behind. Lukowski 
is gaining on Lopez Fraga in the Salva C9. He's going to come strong now. And there goes Cox around the outside. Fraga nowhere to go with that grunt of the Salva C9. You can hear the rotary 787B of Jeff Gallon in the background. And now coming down to the first chicane, it is oh, Jeff Lopez. Oh, oh, no, Lopez. Lopez. And I can hear a, a, a shout go up from the Spanish commentary booth. Lopez's race is pretty much over before it starts, as is Adam Tosquillo. He drops down the field. There's going to be some investigations, at least there. I could see that one coming from a mile off as they went. Oh, and a big incident in the background. Someone off into the gravel. I think uh, Ryoto Kokibun was caught up, but I don't think he was the driver off in the gravel. It's Adam Sesquillo who's off. Jimmy, talk us through the replay. This, I think we're about to see the Lopez incident. Yeah, so here is Lopez on the outside, comes to the inside, then he, he gets tagged uh, by Igor Frank, who then is shoved by Jeff Gallant. Uh, about four cars into one apex don't really go. And that is the result. Yamanaka, look at the gap already now. He expected to see this car pull away at the start, but like the sake, I didn't expect it to be this quick at the start. The gap already three seconds, but now that hybrid will be drained. So cars like uh, the 908 and some of the Group C cars will come. Look, look who's up in fifth position, Mick Hazal in the Nissan. Watch this thing in a straight line. We have Shogun Yoshida there in the Toyota. Look at it, just reel in the LMP1. The Group C showing its might goes to the inside. Thank you very much, says Mick Hazal. Absolutely rocketing around Kerber Grande. And now up to the pack of Patrick, uh, Patrick Basham. This could be his out race if he keeps us up. Well, Igor Fraga is on a recovery. He's up to sixth place, but he is under investigation. And we haven't seen yet that no penalties will be issued. So he still is under investigation. Igor Fraga, what is happening to Igor Fraga? Oh, well, there we go. No penalties issued. So he's going to have a, a huge sigh of relief when he sees that one. But he is in sixth place. Now has a job to do to recover. Tomoaki Yamanaka is out front. And Fraga under pressure from Jonathan Wong, who will look to the outside, coming up towards the scar. He can Wong get through. No, Fraga hangs on for the time being. Now we can see Lopez, I think, to the bottom left of your picture. He's up to 14th on a recovery drive. There's penalties for Karatsa and Kogibun. Uh, but Igor Fraga in the wars once again. Now. This is where the interesting element of the race here comes. Mangalo goes to the inside of Jonathan Wong on the 919 hybrid. Wong um, just gives me a little nudge through the parabolic. I'm not quite sure that's necessary, but Mangalo doesn't really care. He's off now. Again, watch the gap on your screen between Mick Hazal and Patrick Plaza. The Group C Nissan is an absolute beast in a straight line here, especially towards the top end. And he won't need inviting twice to, pa to pass Patrick Plaza. Let's get a camera up there, please, Mr. Race Director. Here's Manglo in the meantime. He's uh, I don't know. He, he's the, he, he rarely does listen to us, actually. Um, but there is Manglo coming around Kerber Grande right now. A very interesting looking Hyundai vision car. Here is Ryuto Kukubun. Haven't spoken about him too much today. Up to 11th in the Jaguar. But uh, really, Chris, not going well for our Asia Oceana regional champion. No, it's really not. Of course, was coming into this as one of the three favourites, as one of the regional final champions, but Ryoto Kokobin at the moment doing the worst of all three of them. Uh, let's go to that battle for second, of course. We've got uh, a Blasha in the chase of Lakotu, but more importantly, Hizau trying to chase down Blasha. Hizau on the medium tyre as well. Fraga is only nine tenths behind that, and he is on the soft tyre. So Fraga, the one closing in on his hour at the moment. Now, after our mix-up with Info in the last race, just to confirm only two compounds of tyres need to be used, which is why you're seeing mediums and softs all the way down the field there. Now, again, Pokemon and Gallon both in the front seat machines, and you can hear that 787 coming from a mile back. The rotary uh, powered car is just so uh, recognisable as it comes blasting past. Now, Igor Fraga has gone onto the back of Mick Pazan, and what's that speedo to the right? That's just going to keep on going, this group seat machine. 330k's, 335 as we turn into Curva Grande. Try not to scrub the steering too much through here, don't lose too much speed. And look to the braking zone. About the 150 balls of these guys, heavy on the brakes, throw it to the inside. Oh, and Fraga wow. has gone too deep. He's probably going to pick up a penalty now. And that's going to have Yoshida back up into fifth place. What's happening with Igor Fraga? 
Well, Igor Fraga is quite literally falling to pieces here. Never seen this from the Brazilian, and it was that pressure situation we were talking about in the pressure of a racing situation. We hadn't seen Igor Fraga under that just yet. And now, twice, Fraga has made little mistakes that have led to him losing position. So, Igor Fraga needs to uh, dust himself down and try and get going once again. How's it going to be feeling, Jim? Have you ever been in a situation? Have you ever been faced with a situation like this where things just don't seem to be working out and you're jumping down the field? Pretty much every stream that I do, Chris, actually. Well, I tend what do to... you do then? <laughs> I haven't found a way to stop it, stop it happening yet, but uh, Igor needs to just calm down a bit. You know, he, he's a man that said he used to get very angry when he raced, but then uh, tried to see to that, tried to calm himself down, we'll have a little bit more before the race where he breathes deep and gets himself centered. He needs to think of that now. And actually, Igor Fraga going on to the hard compound sometimes. That is a move I would not expect. Very interesting. Also oh, into the pits it. is Mangano. On, he's gone on the medium. Lopez has gone to the medium. There's tyre strategy in the bottom left. So you can see the mediums around six tenths of a second slower. Uh, the hard two seconds slower. So that makes that decision from Igor Fraga even more strange. They can use two or more types of tyres. So he can swap to the soft if he wants to, but he doesn't need to use all three. A lot of people in chat saying no penalty for Fraga. He did lose time going over the chicane, so that's my reckoning. He lost his place as yeah. to why he didn't get a penalty there to not gain an advantage. Oh, oh Patrick Blanchard! Blanchard. What's He's happened? come to a stop. He stopped. He's just come to a stop. Rubel are slowing down as well. Let's get a replay, Jimmy. I'm just looking to the stage, see what happened. Here is Patrick Blanchard, and the car just. Oh spins. no, he spins. What? What? Well, he went I wide, didn't he? I don't know what happened he? there. He's, he's kind of back up to speed, I think. But he's down to 15th place, which moves Lukowski up into second, Hizau into third, and Yamanaka, our leader, comes into the pit lane, puts on the medium tyres and is back out onto the circuit. My guess with Flash Andrew is that he spun and then was trying to wait for a gap to get the car back round and going again. It's just a guess, but maybe that's why we saw him go all the way to the back. Okay, interesting one there, but we'll make, come back to the race. Here we go. And you see the, the Toyota without that hybrid coming out of the pit lane suffers massively compared to the Group C Nick and Nissan. But here is one man who has had everything go his way so far. Yamanaka leading by nearly five seconds for Jonathan Wong, who has yet to pit. He did start in last place. Currently in seconds, going all right for Jonathan, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right to the back of the field he started, literally at the back and uh, up to second so he stayed out for the long run he's kept out of trouble and Jonathan Wong could be uh, picking up a very good result and a lot of points in this one if he stays roughly where he is after a stop now Latkovsky is third this is the main focus on track at the moment though the battle for fifth place between his Al Gallen and Yoshida well Gallen is yet to stop his Al and Yoshida have so they're looking to get by ASAP and his Al's going to go through into Ascari what about uh, Yoshida he should get to on the exit and we should be expecting to see Gallen into the pits very shortly now the, th the thing is Chris if uh, his Al finishes strong here we have a double point race for our finale it could be anybody's game I thought coming into this as to a lot of people that Igor Fraga would have an easy job here today but the Brazilian driver has just not delivered at this point. No. Uh, we've got Jonathan Wong into the pits, by the way. Uh, let's see how far he drops back. His Al's now gone up to third. Uh, and we'll wait for all of this to work itself out. But we do know Yamanaka is clear by 5.3 seconds, having stopped and gone to the medium tyre. Likewise, Latkovsky. His Al is third, Yoshida fourth. Jonathan Wong has picked up a penalty in fifth place there. Then it is Mangano, Karatsa, Gokibin, Gallan and Lopez. So if it finished as it was right now, then Yamanaka would have a nine-point advantage going into the final. Of course, with double points, he could still quite easily lose out, but that's a good place to be at this stage of the competition. Lukovsky is in second position just behind. He would be on 29 points. Behind him, Mick Hazal would move up into fourth position in the championship rankings uh, with 25 points. So still within a shout uh, for our European champion. And this is also going to set the grid for that final race, which is double points, as Jimmy said. And if there is a tie, it goes down to who is ahead on track. So uh, 
this is a big, big moment in this. Yamanaka looking very good at the moment, but double points is the big thing in that final race. I need, we need to talk about Igor Fraga because he's pitted again. Um, for the medium tyres, so maybe he's uh, getting his info from me in the last race yes. and has tried the two stop when only he needs to use the one stop. We'll, we'll have to wait and see what's happened there, but uh, regardless, the Brazilian now down to 11. Now, here comes John Wong on Giorgio Mangalo after serving a penalty. Look at the background, Carazza in the Bugatti Veyron comes to the outside. Sorry, that, that isn't a favour, but it's a Bugatti of some sort. Look at it go to the outside. We'll go around to the left now for Kerber Grande. They'll have to come back in. He might squeeze John from Wong, though Wong has the inside uh, just about. But he's got nowhere to go right now. He's got the sit for Mangano Carras. He's going to take sit, try and outbreak Wong. Whoa. And Wong is all sorts of sideways into the chicane. And they just about get takes the place. How did he manage that? Well, how did he hold on to that slide? Drifting all the way into and then through the corner. Fantastic driving there from Jonathan Wong on those soft tyres. He's now going to go after Mangano, who's on the medium tyres ahead. So, uh, Jonathan Wong staring at a top five finish here and a top five place on the grid before that final race. This a little bit further back. Yatlam Law and Adam Susquillo, two drivers who are not having a good day at the office whatsoever. Now, let's uh, have a, a look at the leader. We've got Tomoaki Yamanaka leading by 5.8 seconds. We're going to go into now the Italian commentator, of course, Giorgio Mangano, up to fifth. Era ed è ancora ovviamente eh, ecco qua intanto inquadrato il nostro Giorgio Mangano, Mangano che è tallonato, che è tallonato da, da Wong, Wong che in questo momento lo passa a sì. più a spunto però adesso c'è ancora l'effetto scia vediamo se, se da questo camera car Giorgio riesce guarda, a prendere guarda, la scia guardalo, guardalo. vai Giorgio guarda, guardalo, aiuta, guardalo vai e riprende ancora una volta la acceso quinta posizione acceso i posti Giorgio Mangano acceso i posti ed è andato mamma mia ragazzi in uscita di curva la Hyundai di Giorgio eh, non, non è così eh, rapida nel prendere giri ma poi ma sull'allungo lungo sì. ce la fa ma ce la fa sì. dai Giorgino intanto sta riscalando dai. faticosamente ahimè o meglio per, ai, ai lui great to hear from our Italian commentators there of course big fans of Giorgio Mangano as you expect but they aren't going to like this John from one goes round the outside of the first Lesmo somehow gets that done kind of glad we can't hear the Italians now because there'll be some choice words over there yeah we cut away at just the right time it seems now we are getting into the business end of the world finals here and of course we do have one more race after this but uh, Yamanaka is really doing a good job out front Jonathan Wong up to fifth place uh, on those soft tyres so should be expected to see him going past Mangano he won't make any more places in this race unless there is huge drama up ahead Igor Fraga remains in a low he has caught up to the back of Lopez of course them two had a bit of a ding dong earlier in the race, Lopez trying to recover, so they'll come to wars once again. There is Carazza in seventh place, and then we have uh, Ryoto Kokogun there in eighth. We are now going on to the final lap of the race. Yamanaka extending his lead even more, Jimmy, now up to almost seven seconds. Here comes Ryoto Kokogun in that beautiful XJR9. The monster goes up the inside of Carazza and Asuran like he's absolutely standing still. The grunt there of the V12 Jaguar as it flies down to the second. Well, the first chicane here in this row, I guess, now really barreling in on Giorgio Mangano. It's not been a great competition so far for Ryuto Kokobon, so he's looking to try and make up as many places as he can going into the last round. And what a beautiful car to do it in, though. Makes a small mistake coming out of the second Lesmo. He might have the grunt to catch him past Mangano. Let's wait and see. He's on the soft tyres, so he's going to have the advantage in the corners, too. Well, out front, though, Yamanaka only has one corner remaining. And is he putting one hand on that world finals trophy here comes Somoaki Yamanaka he is about to take victory in race number three fantastic performance the finish line awaits Yamanaka takes victory in race number three fantastic driving from him 7.5 seconds behind here it's Cody Nikola Lakovsky well in contention for overall victory as well Mick Hazal has brought himself back into play with that third place Shogo Yashi Sheeda fourth, and then fifth place is Jonathan Wong. Jonathan Wong started last, Chris. Up to fifth position, a great performance for him. Mangalo said, Pokemon ended up in seventh, Karatsa eighth, Gallon ninth, Braga tenth.
position. Good to see good sportsmanship there. Cody, Nikola Lakowski straight out the rig over to Tomowaki Yamanaka, a handshake between the pair. I think they know they're about to go battle for the world final title. So uh, that final race awaits, Jimmy. It's going to be crunch time and Igor Fraga going to be even in a worse position now down the field once again that we know the grid now having that result what's your thoughts ahead of that final race and and reflection on what we've just seen uh i think that this wasn't in fraga's plan so to speak here is the replay here is igor fraga going into the first chicane uh and here is the off board footage actually ran into the back of lopez got a nice big punt there from jeff gallon lopez of course battered off into the gravel track here's his reaction uh, looks a lot calmer than I'd be, I'll tell you that now. Yes, indeed. This was uh, a fifth place Igor Fraga, and that was a big mistake going into the first chicane. Patrick Lashan, this was his spin, so got on the gravel and spun round. And third, uh, well. facing the wrong way and dropped all the way to 15th as a result of that. From third, and here was Giorgio Mangalo and Jonathan Wong having a fantastic fight one day on Porsche 919 Hybrid. Of course, the 919 Hybrid a lot better out of the corners. Here he was going round the outside of Giorgio Mangolo at the first Lesmo. Great move there from Jonathan Wong. But it was Yamanaka, of course, who came across the line to take the second race victory in a row in this FIA GT Championship World Final, looking very, very strong for the final race. Yeah, trying to keep calm at the same time, though, wasn't he, Tomoaki Yamanaka? As much as he's happy, he knows that there's still one more race to go, and it's going to be double points of course as well so uh, we're getting to the point standings of course for you very very shortly that last race is going to be in the x2014 cars as well at uh, le mans so that is going to be fantastic stuff definitely uh, equal playing field of course for our drivers and they were very close coming in on points to come onto a screen very shortly not really quite sure what to expect here. We know Igor Fraga is very strong in that x2014 given his performance at previous events but it's a car that doesn't suit everybody. It's a high downforce car. You need to really have that reaction time for that car. But if anyone's got it, it's going to be our drivers. And again, Yamanaka in a great position. And talking of this race, was there any cars that surprised you? Of course, drivers, I think we know that the, where the surprises came from there. But what about cars? I must say, although the Group C cars had a bit of an easier time with this zero chicane Monza, so to speak, um, I did not expect them to be anywhere near the front. But Mick Hazal dragging that uh, R92 up into third position. Probably my driver of the race, I think. Actually, sorry, outside of that, he was my second driver of the race, my first, Jonathan Wong. Mm, yeah. Great performance by him. Fifth position from last. And I think we're seeing the pressure of the event now really taking its toll on some of the drivers, mistakes being made. And then th those, I think, who are good at keeping calm are coming to the fore, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. And um, here are our standings on screen now. So you can see uh, confirmation. Yamanaka takes the full 12 points. Lakoxi takes 10. Mick Hazal, 8. Yoshida, 7th. Wong, 6th. Mangano, 5. Kogibun, 4th. And Karatsa, 5th. Jeff Gallon picks up 2 points. Igor Fraga picks up 1 point only from race 3. So those were the race three results then. Confirmation of who took how many points for you. It's getting towards the end of the uh, championships. It's been, a, it's been a fantastic year, isn't it? It's, it's a shame it's coming uh, to an end. It's been kind of crazy to think that I've been at uh, you as well at many of these events. And this is the last race, the one to decide them all. And I really don't know who to call. If you said to me this morning, Jimmy, who's going to come away of this? I would have probably said Igor Fraga. Now, no idea, absolutely no idea. So what we're gonna be doing now is passing over to Julia with an interview with our current top three drivers. Let's see what they have to say. Yes, yeah, so I'm here with our top three drivers just before we go into this fourth and final race. I feel kind of bad dragging them away because it's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a tense moment. Um, how do you feel um, after that last race? <laughs> まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、
Uh, in the race two, my car had a very aggressive tire wear, so it was very difficult to keep the car on the track until the end. You know, there was a slight contact with uh, Yamanaka-san, and my car was just sliding all around. And uh, unfortunately, I, I came down to fourth. And, uh, you know, but uh, it, it still have uh, one, one race to go, and I want just to, to give my best, and let's see. It's, uh, anything can happen still. Um, how do you, if you have a bad race, how do you let that go? Because that must be one of the hardest things to just sort of say, okay, let's do better next time. How do you do it? Yeah, it's actually very difficult, but I always try to look forward. And, you know, in this time, you, you don't have time to, you know, think much about the past, what, what happened. So I just try to, you know, always look farther and, and, you know, learn from my mistakes and try to do even better. Okay. How do you feel going in? What's going to be your strategy for this final race? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe starting on the softs, we'll see. I mean, we might do some... You haven't made your mind up yet. There's just so many options, so many combinations. I mean, uh, the hards on these Red Bull standards uh, really brings the pace down. The softs are just amazing. The mediums are somewhere in between. But uh, I think that at the start, everyone's going to try and go aggressive, make as many positions as possible. So my best chance, I would say, would be on softs. Okay, there's a lot of things to consider here, but thank you so much. Good luck, you know, in the final race. We're about to uh, go to that final race. Let's find out how it's all going to play out. Monte Carlo, the iconic playground of the rich and famous. And home to one of the most technical street circuits in F1. They've been racing here in the Principality now for over 89 years, but things have definitely changed since Louis II was Prince. The Fairmount hairpin, perhaps the most famous turn in racing, has challenged legends from every era of racing. From five-time Monaco Grand Prix winner Graham Hill to five-time F1 champion Lewis Hamilton. Today, another chapter in racing history will be written. Drivers from around the world are once again here in Monaco to race on tracks from all over the planet. Today, we'll crown our first FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup World Champion. Yes, and this is what they are all racing for. This beautiful, beautiful trophy by, based off of Umberto Boccioni. Uh, yes, the unique forms of continuity in space. We did a little bit of art research there. We did, uh, yeah, Umberto Boccioni, one of the uh, futurist movement at the turn of the, or the start of the 20th century. Did you know that? The futurist no, movement, yeah. I didn't get that far down the page. They focused very much <laughs> on youth, on speed, on movement, and on cars as well. So quite fitting, uh, seriously, that it is um, the trophy for the, for the world champion tonight, our first one ever. And it's the, the kind of ethos that very, very much fits with Katsunori's vision and, and, and also the, the Gran Turismo ethos as well, you know? Do you feel a bit sad? Because I feel a bit sad that it's the last race. That it's coming to the end? Yeah. I do a bit, yeah. Yeah, but, I, yeah. but look, we've got one more race to look forward to, and it's going to be an absolute cracker, and it's another legendary circuit to take us round it. I had a quick chat with Canada's Jeffrey Gala. So, the legendary Lassat circuit at Le Mans then for the finals, and we've got a guy here, Jeffrey Gallan, uh, from Canada, who, well, you were just telling me actually before that you've never been outside of Canada before Las Vegas. I know that you haven't been to this circuit in real life, but you must have driven it plenty of times in Gran Turismo. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've been playing this for six or seven years, and the circuit is, is a high, one of the fastest circuits in the world. Even the slow sections of the racetrack, you can still take the slow sections and the bus stop and the first chicane is like near 100, 120 kilometers an hour. The first section, the first two apexes of the chicane, um, you have to nail those, get the good exit. And then near the end of the first sector, make sure you take that last corner, the last right-hander kink flat out. You have to have a good exit for the long straightaway. And then the two bus stops and the back straightaway. The same thing as everywhere else on the circuit, you can take those so much faster than you think. Uh, make sure you have good exits. Near the middle section of the track, there's a third gear left-hander with a really banked corner. You can take that nearly like 160 kilometers an hour. You need a lot of 
cojones to take that. <laughs> yeah. And then the last sector of this course, uh, especially with the Porsche curbs, you can you can take that full throttle in these cars. Um, no other car can do that, maybe besides a Formula One car. And for you to be tackling this circuit, as I said, it's a legendary place. And in the World Finals, how special is that? Oh, it's absolutely, it's almost like a dream come true. It's great to meet all these competitors and, and be able to race on this track and be in the World Final. I can't really ask for anything better than this right now. Listen, we wish you all the very best in this one. Good luck, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, Jeffrey with lots of work to do around the home to the world's oldest active sports car race and endurance racing, the Le Mans 24 hour, of course, and the ideal place to put the Gran Turismo Red Bull X 2014 car to the ultimate test. We heard Jeffrey there discuss some of the key points on almost 14 kilometers of private and public tarmac. This is one of the longest circuits in the world and certainly one of the most famous. Wow, yes. Let's take a look also at the particular car, obviously, that we're going to be driving in uh, for this one. Well, not me personally. Not you personally, no. Not the way you drove that GT3 car hey, earlier, leave anyway. Hello. Uh, listen, this is <laughs> <laughs> the, the Red Bull X2014 standard. This is the brainchild, if you like, the fantasy of Red Bull racing engineering guru Adrian Newey. It's got front and rear wheel covers um, and a glass canopy to reduce the uh, air resistance. Double plane front wing, two litre turbocharged V6 uh, engine producing 788 brake horsepower. So lots of power going through the tyres in this one. Uh, nine laps, one time fuel consumption and each driver must use each tyre type at least once. So they don't get a choice here, they do, obviously they do get to choose which order. So with identical cars, tyre strategy could well be where this race is won and lost and ride, um, driver ability as well of course. That's very true. Uh, well, all about. okay. I don't want to d say the next thing because that means it's nearly over. But it is time for our final race of the Nations Cup. We're super excited here. You guys are all excited to here to see the final race? Oh, yeah. Let's put them all out of their misery and chuck it over to our commentators. Let's see how this all plays out. Good luck, guys. Well, they're happy. I'm excited. I think we're excited. Mm. Hopefully, you are excited. Let's get ready to go racing for the final time in the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup. It is the final race, and here are the points going into it. Yamanaka on 38 points, Fraga on 30, Lakovsky on 29, then it is Hizal, Lopez, Yoshida. They are split by just two points. Then we had Kalatza next. Jonathan Wong is ninth, and it's Kogobin, Mangano, Blashan, Portia, Sasuilo, Law, and Rubelart. Double points in this one, Jimmy, in those X2014 cars around Le Mans. Even though Igor Fraga may have struggled in the last two races, he's still well in play for this one. This one is far from decided. Definitely, and that's, uh, I'm glad it came down this way. I mean, of course, we were almost in a little bit of, uh, there could have been a chance this could have been an easy session for Igor Fraga, but uh, completely not the case whatsoever. And here we go then, race start, last race of the Nations Cup World Final. Well, what can we say? It has been a fantastic journey for myself, for Chris, and for everybody here in Monaco for the Nations Cup. The final round of the season is about to get underway. Let's go through our grid. It's Yamanaka starting on pole position at the moment, and it will be back to Lokowski in second. Your Australian driver looking very feisty all through the competition. Third is Mick Hazal, our European champion, still in with a shout. Shogo Yoshida will be fourth in that Japanese livery to X2014. Fifth is Jonathan Wong after a fantastic result at Monza. And then down to sixth, it's Giorgio Mangano, the Italian favourite. After that, I'm going to ask them twice. Then our Asia Oceana champion, Ryoto Kokiburn, 
In seventh, eighth position is Carazza. The Brazilian started strong but faded slightly towards the end there. It's Jeff Gallon, Lloyd Delete, not Lloyd Delight, I've said many times about the uh, superstars. Igor Fraga, our America's champion, starts in 10th position. Jorge Lopez, the Spanish driver, in 11th. Then down in 12th is uh, Portilla. A bit lower down than he would have liked to have been. Patrick Bajan, after his mistake at Monza, starting well down the field in 13th position. Someone who hasn't performed as well as he thought, Adam Cicillo, 14th position. Then down to 15th, Yat Van Law. And rounding out the grid for this final race is Nico Rubla, Nico R, Chris. Let's do it. Indeed. Right, here we go. History about to be written here in Monaco. We are about to crown the inaugural champion of the FIA GT Championship Nations Cup World Final. First in the points it is Yamanaka, and he starts on pole position. Fraga, who is second in the, in the points, starts in 10th, but he was quickest around here on Friday during qualifying. So definitely one to watch, and he's gone for the hard tyre. However, with a nine-point advantage, a top three finish for Yamanaka should be enough to seal the deal. So he's in a very good position at the moment, but Lakovsky will want something to say about that. In second place, he is, on, of course, third in the point standings, chasing an overall victory. Right, take a deep breath, everyone. Let's get ready to go racing for the final time in 2018. And Yamanaka leads us down towards turn number one. Lakovsky in second place. He's now in third. All on the soft tyres will be looking to get away early. Please, please have a clean start to the race, everyone. Lakovsky trying to challenge for the lead as they go in towards the Dunlop chicane. Yamanaka just holding on. He's out there in third place. Then it is Yoshida in fourth. One is fifth. Mangano in sixth at the moment. Then we have Kadatsa, Kokibin, Gallen, Fraga. Watch for him in 10th place. He has a title to chase down here, but Yamanaka leads us through Touch Rouge for the first time, Jimmy. A top three streaking away from the field. Yamanaka has a slight gap over Lakoski and Hazal. Hazal will have the sip screen on Lakoski coming down to the first Molsan chicane for the first time of asking. He goes to the inside, wants to get past nice and quick. Lakoski comes across to block the move. Hazal still on the inside though, who's going to break first? It will be Lakovsky, he'll just about keep the position for now, but Yamanaka holding the position, but he's not in the best place right now. He is giving a sit screen to both Lakovsky and to Hazal at this stage, and Shogun Yoshida just about holding on the background, but top three making a very quick start indeed. And Lakovsky draws alongside Yamanaka as they head down towards the second chicane, and he's through the Australian. He's into the race lead on the opening lap. Here comes Mick Hazal. Is it going to be three one? to the chicane, I think it is, Hizal dives to the inside, oh, all three going to emerge, they do, and Mick Hizal has taken the race lead, Lakovsky drops to second place, Yamanaka down to third place, but that should be enough to take overall victory, however, his countryman Shogo Yoshida could come into play as well in fourth, but Mick Hizal and Lakovsky are still going at it out front, Jimmy, as we come down towards Mosan, is Lakovsky going to dive to the inside, he stays in second for now. What a fantastic move by Hazel, very much the opportunist, the, uh, the uh, German driver, and now starting to pull away from Lakovsky, but now another long straight on the run down to Indianapolis, so Lakovsky will have the toe, as will Yamanaka behind. Now, what will Cody do? He goes to the outside, he has the run, he's now in front of Hazel coming down to Indianapolis, but now the Cyprian runs out, the German driver still there on the inside, and Cody Lakovsky takes the lead of the race, Temporarily coming down to Indianapolis, now down to the slowest corner on the circuit. Arnaz, oh, no, let's see how good Cody and Hizal are on the brakes. Both good through their impact. If anything, Lakovsky is a little bit wide on exit, and now Hazal will have the toe coming up to the Porsche curves. If he can get in front for the Porsche curves, he'll have the advantage because of the dirty air. Lakovsky comes across, but it's a bit too late. They're going to be side by side coming into the first right hand of the Porsche curves. Lakovsky gets the throttle, and Hazal back into the lead.
three different leaders in just three quarters of a lap. What a fantastic race. This is it. This is already deserving of the title, of course, the FIA GT Championship World Final in the Nations Cup. And Mick Hizal will lead us across the line, will he, at the end of lap number one. Of course, the top three on soft tyres. Yamanaka, I think, staying out of this one. Uh, he, of course, top three finish should be it for him. So I think he's just happy to stay where he is for now. But Hizal it is who takes the first lap in the lead lap. Cops in second, Yamanaka third. There you can see Lapkowski to the bottom left of your picture. Look, uh, look at the focus of the American. And Jimmy, there's Igor Fraga. He's up to seventh already and challenging Jonathan Moore. So Fraga still very much in the fight, but you can see that as soon as Hazal got to a series of calls, he pulled away from Cody Lapkowski. But now, of course, coming back up the straight, Cody will pull back in in the sixth thing. Now, Karatsa, I wonder if he is knowledgeable to his countryman's situation. Will he help out at all, or is it every man? For himself, he does have a penalty which will have to serve rather soon. But Igor Fraga right now is by far the first of the hard runners, but oh very no. wide the touch rouge. That's probably going to be a penalty. Yamanaka with a 0.8 second penalty. And here comes Shogun Yoshida. Now, I don't know what this would do. We need some more key standards, really, but... Well, I think that's it. He's going to have, what, 14 points, I think that is, he'll take, which means that his owl and Lakovsky should, should go past him, but we'll get life points for you in just a second. His owl still leads from Lakovsky, but Yamanaka crucially out of the top three. Here is Igor Fraga now trying to go up to sixth place. We'll come back to that. I think Jimmy will keep an eye on that. I'll keep an eye on the lead for the time being, because Lakovsky has drawn alongside his owl, and he's back into the race lead. And also, Igor Fraga is past Don for Wong up into sixth position, so our championship contenders are all making moves right now. The cost is his out. His oh. out goes sideways off the second chicane. That might be enough to break the toe. See, the cost of the North goes OK. I needed that, but but he's still well within sixth in range to be pulling back in again. Now, here's Shogun Yoshida. He's now in front of Yamanaka after Yamanaka's penalty he had to serve. Yamanaka will go back past his countryman, and Shogun Yoshida not really putting up that much of a fight, Chris. Yeah, so Yamanaka back into third, crucially. So, big move that from Yamanaka. He's, of course, on the soft tyres as well. Jimmy, how big is this? He's on soft tyres, and he's three seconds back from the other two drivers that are on soft tyres battling for the lead. But Igor Fraga is in sixth from the hard tyre and was well within the medium compound ones. We saw how good he was here in qualifying. So Igor Fraga very much the one to watch, but Mick Kazawa has moved back into the lead, coming down to Indianapolis. There it is on your screen right now, just going past in the sixth screen, coming up to Arnage. Now, really, ideally, you want to be the car leading going into the Porsche curves, Mick Hazal a bit too impatient on the front of there coming out on the slowest corner of the circuit and Lakotsky once more will be able to gain in on this straight will Hazal defend a flash of the lights there from the Australian driver says look at me here I come, go round the outside Hazal does not lift, lifts out a bench that Kosti is now going to lead to the Porsche curves just switching places right now this could be anyone's game for it so Lakovsky back into the lead then. He and Hazal trading places as we've got an instant involving Nicholas Rudra and Yatlam Lord down the field. So bad days go even worse for them. Jonathan Wong has a penalty in seventh as well. But Igor Fraga doing a fantastic job, as you said, Jimmy, on the harder tyre. He's getting the slowest tyre out of the way first. Not only is he getting it out of the way, but he's moving forward. He's gained four places so far as Kokibun goes past Karatsa. We just build away from that battle to return to this because Jimmy we're about to go on to that Molson straight very shortly and his out is definitely close enough to get the toe and potentially make a move. Now, this is very interesting because Igor Fraga the reason why he's being kept in contention is because of the sip streak. If he pitted in now and went to send a medium for the soft compound he might be left without a sip stream partner which would then see him fall down the field so he's really thinking about when he needs to come in. He is just about within reach of uh, Giorgio Mangano. If he can get onto the back there of the Italian driver, I say that, he moves up into full position. Fraga into fifth, Rashida makes a mistake, down to sixth, and must have got a penalty or something. Now, there's been pit stops, so some drivers have come off the hard tyre. However, Igor Fraga has stayed on them. I think, as you said, because he's got the toe. So, that was a, a good spot there. And Igor Fraga, 1.2 seconds behind Mango, so he should be closing in down the straight as well. Meanwhile, he's out, and Lakovsky has split by around eight tenths of a second. This on board now with Karatsa, who's being closed in by Ryoto Kok. 
Cockyburn, not the day we expected for Cockyburn, but can he get a good result in the grand final? Down towards Mosan we go, in fact, this stuff, of course, going towards the Chicane, so uh, Cockyburn there in eighth place closing in. Yeah, here is the Supreme, in effect, the Asia Oceana regional champion closing into the back of Karatsa, coming down to second chicane. Igor Fraga has gone up into fourth position on the hard tyre. How has he managed that? He stayed with Giorgio Mangano. What a drive for the Brazilian driver so far. He knows he has to score well in this place if he wants any chance of uh, coming away with the FIA GT Championship Nations Cup. But still a long race to go. Jimmy, I think he's actually quicker than Yamanaka on the soft tyre, if you can believe it or not. Right, live points. Yamanaka one, one point ahead of Latkowski. He's our third with 45 points. So Latkowski needs to hang on to that lead and hope Yamanaka drops back. This is absolutely insane, Chris. I think that live point ranking was before Fraga went up into fourth, uh, fourth position, so he actually would overtake Mick Hazal and be in third. But Giorgio Mangano actually opted to stay behind the Brazilian driver. Now, when does Igor Fraga pit? Will he come in now with the rest of the soft runners? Because in, in, in reality, he has That's made it. the hard tyre uh, go the same speed as the guys on the soft. So imagine his pace when he finally switches to a faster tyre, actually pulling away from Giorgio Mangano, coming out of Arnaz. And look, look there up the road, third position. Yamanaka is being gained on by Igor Fraga and Giorgio Mangano. Look at Fraga through the Porsche curve. Giorgio Mangano has no chance of hanging with the Brazilian. What speed he has right now, he is far from down and out. He knows what's at stake. He wants that world final title. Igor Fraga may have had one or two little errors today and been involved in one or two incidents, but he is recovering in style right into the pits. Mikhail Hizal, Yamanaka comes into the pits and, and Igor Fraga comes into the pits. But Latkovsky, Jimmy, stays out. This could be terrible for Latkovsky. He has no six green partner. It's going to be on worn soft tires whereas everyone behind him is going to be all close together and of course six people down the straight which is worth about a second or two of lap but Kowski is probably going to end up after his pit stop behind this train we'll wait until all the pit stops are done and dusted before we call who is where is. but Ryuto Kokobo and Shogo Yoshida who have not pitted move up into second and third place Mick Hazal keeps the fourth place and Yamanaka fifth Braga on the medium tyre, he is the one to watch. Well, all I can say for Latkowski, did he just want a lap with no pressure, put the blinkers on and just go for it? Uh, is that what he wanted, a qualifying style lap without a toe? I mean, that's of course what he's not going to have, but he hasn't been having that whilst keeping Mikhail Hazal at bay. Here's Igor Fraga back out in sixth place on the medium tyre, as are Yamanaka and Hazal, and he's only getting closer. The gap is now one and a half seconds to Yamanaka and Hazal. Igor Fraga loves this car, very similar in terms of downforce. He drives, of course, a uh, single-seat Formula car in real-life racing. It's about as near as you're going to get in Grand Pismo without being in a, another Formula car itself. And look at him gain on Yamanaka. So 1.3 seconds to the gap now. But also have a little bit of draft. And again, the heart rate there, about 150 beats per minute. So in the zone right now is Igor Fraga. He's got Giorgio Mangano behind as well, keeping him honest. But we have to see what happens with Lakotsky once he comes in, surely, at the end of this lap. Yeah, he's going to have to come in. He's actually being caught by Ryoto Kokibun. The gap has come down by just under a second, actually. So that's what it's been costing Lakotsky. may actually be a little bit less than that, a few tenths, I'd say. But Igor Fraga now in the toe of Yamanaka, trying to close in on the Japanese driver who leads the points at the moment as they go in towards Molsan on the brakes. Fraga, where he's very strong, of course, is the right of the Porsche curves. But will he be as strong this time now, Jimmy? Now he's following Yamanaka. I think what watch and learn is okay. what I'll say. Well, why don't you talk this <laughs> uh, Now, I could not foresee the final of this Nations Cup being so tense. There are so many different possibilities coming out of that. Of course, Igor Fraga is the one 
making them happen. Meanwhile, back for 9th, 10th, 11th, it is a Sesquilo, Gallon and a Blajan. Patrick Blajan, a favourite for a lot of people coming into this uh, this uh, race, this series, sorry, hasn't really delivered, not quite had the pace, of course, big mistake at Monza last time out, but paid to his chances realistically, but still in ninth, this is still in the top 10, and here is Adam Sesquilo, another person who was very, very fast in the superstar races, but doesn't quite perform the same for live events, it seems. Yeah, well, uh, let's, uh, of course, we'll get you some points updates once all the pit stops have been made. I think that'll be the best time to look at it. Right, Latkowski in. He lost about half a second, six tenths on that lap. He's now into the pits. Let's see where he emerges. He goes on the medium tyre. Cockerbin peels in as well, but not really part of the fight for the lead, of course, nor the title. Oh, Yoshida using a bit of gravel to come through into the pits. And he's going to go on the soft tyre. Right, here comes Hizal. Does he inherit the race lead now from Latkowski? and if so how much by across the line they come let's see if Latkowski appears where will he come out his out is into the lead and Latkowski is his second let's wait and see he is so Latkowski second he's lost two seconds 2.2 seconds lost for Latkowski in that pit stop Yamanaka third frog of fourth he'll be kicking himself to me and that is the younger cup we were talking about Mick Hazal making good use of those medium tyres and giving himself a 2.6 second advantage European champion champion showing why he is one of the best in the world right now the bold strategic move you can see on the screen right there there is Mick Hazal and as always just leaning back looking as cool as anything well I'm sure he knows this man is on a charge load Igor Fraga and here are the live points rankings as they would be Yamanaka would still uh, take the title Mick Hazal will be second McCoskey fourth Igor Fraga I thought he would be fourth and Lukowski would be third, but here is Fraga with Karatsa side by side with his Brazilian counterpart. Get out of the way, says Fraga. I've got a championship to win, but again, no love lost between these two guys. Once they get onto the circuit, it's all business. So there we go, there you can see the points at the moment. Yamanaka leading by five points from his owl. He just needs to try and stay in this top three, but Fraga is getting closer. Oh, and, well, there we go, he's pushing along Karatsa up to the back of Yamanaka. Interesting tactics there. And look how much closer they've got by doing that. Yamanaka goes a little bit wide in the second goal stand now. Will Fraga sit stream the both of them? Yamanaka in third, Karatsa fourth. They've got the sip screen, they'll probably have a look down to the Molsan corner. Here comes Karatsa. Well, Yamanaka go, he puts the car in the middle of the road and weaves back to left, squeezes the Brazilian driver to the outside. Fraga looks going to try and follow him through. Thinks better of it. That was a wise move by Fraga. No point getting involved in that point. But Karatsa goes up into fourth and now Fraga is going to have the sip screen on Yamanaka and will likely pass him on the way down to Indy. Well, the gap between Yamanaka and his how drops too far. Just three points, sorry, with two points lost there for Yamanaka and it could be two points more if Fraga comes by which would mean there'd just be one point between the pair so this turning into a really close place but Yamanaka doesn't want any of that he's going to try and fight back going in towards Indianapolis Yamanaka dives down the inside and he's third Fraga comes through to take four brilliant overtaking there I don't know about that that was a little bit silly by Yamanaka because now look Igor Fraga his main one of his main competitors is right on the back and he has the slipstream, he has the hot seat coming down to the Porsche curves. He'll have the slipstream, he'll do a slingshot past. There he goes, right onto the outside circle, kicks up the dust, dirty line through there. But he goes up into oh. third position, and Karatsa follows him through. But importantly for Fraga, he now has a clear track. He will now hunt down Cody Lokowski and Mick Hazal and do his best to bring that gap down. What a drive by the Brazilian driver. He started in 10th position. He's up to third place and he's yet to use the soft tyre. So, Eagle Fraga, when he bolts those on, I wonder how quick he'll be. Karatsa there, he's running in fifth place at the moment, worth a, a quick mention, of course. He's having a, a really strong day. Now he's in the toe of Igor Fraga. What's going to happen? Are they going to work together or are they going to fight? 3.4 seconds up the road is Cody Nikola Lekovsky. What do you reckon? Well, look at this, Karatsa is not giving Fraga any room at all. He's carrying his uh, fellow countrymen. I think they'll be catching Lukowski fairly quickly, especially if they work together as they have been. Of course, there's no rules against doing that. 
although you are uh, directly fighting each other, there's no team points here. And there is the live point ranking if things finish as they were. Yamanaka 50, Hazel 49, Lepkowski 49, and Igor Fraga 46. So Fraga, a couple more places. And there you go. Well, Lepkowski, if he wins the race, and things stay as they are, he will be champion. That's what the Australian is chasing down at the moment, but Igor Frager could be the one to destroy his chances, of course. He wants to win it himself. He's on 46 points at the moment, only four points behind Yamanaka. So there is Igor Frager in front, and that, as you said, Jimmy, Lakovsky is getting closer. He's closed in by seven tenths since they've come back out onto the circuit. So Lakovsky going along very well. It won't be long before he's picking up a toe and really drawing in. But Fraga has the advantage. He has the soft tyres left. And here is a fight this behind Yamanaka and Blazhan. And Yamanaka needs to keep this place. If he doesn't keep this place right now and the race finished as it was, he lose out on the Nations Cup. Uh, well, the, the, he, he lose out in the Nations Cup, would he? <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't get the cup. Right the first time. Yeah, there right. we go. It's the rare time where I say it right on the first occasion. But Yamanaka needs to keep Blazhan behind, and Blazhan is at, having absolutely none of it. He's on the soft tyre, through the inside he goes, and just like that, Yamanaka at the moment is not the Nations Cup winner. It would be Cody Lukowski. This is brilliant stuff here at the Nations Cup World Final. Oh, sorry, it'll be Hazel. Blashan is through, and we have a new leader, everyone, in the Nations Cup, and his name is Mikhail Hizel. He is tied on points with Cody Nikolakovsky, but because he is ahead on track, that means he is the champion. One point behind them is Yamanaka, and only three points behind them is Igor Fraga. Did we expect... We knew it was going to be close, Jimmy. Did you expect it to be this close? This can go any way at the moment. I'm feeling rather smug right now because I call Cody Lutkowski as my outside chance. Yeah, yeah, he right. very much has come to fruition there. Yamanaka just not able to match the pace of everybody else right now. And the gap at the front of the field down to a second at the moment. Lutkowski really feeling in the German driver. But he's going to have to go to the hard tyres for his last stint. And I think end of this lap may be... Fraga will be in the pit lane to bulk on those softs, then you'll see how fast that Brazilian can hustle the Red Bull X2010 round here, the circuit to the side. Here is Patrick Blazhan, in comes Mick Hazel, in comes yep. Lukowski, they're both going to go onto the hard tyres. Now, realistically, if they want to beat Fraga, they have to work together. Fraga comes in for the soft tyre, it's going to be hard versus soft. I don't see any way that Fraga cannot win this. You see down on the graphic in the bottom left, 3.3 seconds a lap. A lap the racing hard tyre is slower than the soft. This is going to be an absolutely fantastic finale. We're tied on points as it stands. That of course changed whilst pit stops are being made, this is the second and final. Pit stops now being made, Hizal comes back onto the track, Lakovsky around one second behind. Uh, 1.2 make that as they make their way then through Dunlop Chicane. Eagle Fogger, 3.3 seconds back with soft tyre, so if our graphics correct, he'll be with them at the end of this lap. This is going to be one of the closest finishes we have ever had, and what a what time is better than this one? At the moment, it's Giorgio Mangano who leads at the moment. He still owns the pit stop, as does Shogo Yoshida behind. So, with Mick Hazel, that will inherit the lead when all is done. But look, Igor Fraga on the soft compound of tyres. On the soft camp compound of tyres, you can go through Tesharouche flat in this car. And we saw in qualifying just how dominant Fraga was when he had the soft tyre, had a track to himself, but now he's got six green and we know the Brazilian is hungry for the win here. He's already closed in by one second. Already one second, make that 1.3. It's now less than two seconds between Fraga, Lakovsky and Hizal. He's going to be quite simply unstoppable, in my opinion. Race director, please give us a camera on Mick Hazel, Lakovsky and Fraga. That is a fight for your championship right now. We're looking at Patrick Bajan behind Karatsa. And at the moment, this wouldn't really have that much of an effect on the championship standings. of Yamanaka has fallen down to eight. Bajan's going to go to the inside now, I think. No, stays behind. Let's see what's happening up front. 
the gap between Hezel and Lakowski is a second, but the gap between the, the, the sorry, and Fraga is 1.5 seconds. It's coming down all the time. Mr. Race Director, please give us a camera. Yes. There we go. There is Hezel. There's Lakowski. There's Fraga. That is the gap. There are no more pit stops. It's now a straight fight to the end. Fraga with a soft tyre is going to have the advantage, but we know Mick Hezel is talented. We know Lakowski is talented. This is still anyone's game. This is it, two and a half laps remaining. Mick Hizal, third place, but leading, of course, once Mangano and Yoshida come in. <laughs> he gives us a wave. Hello, Mick Hizal. Yes, you're fighting for the world title, but uh, you don't seem too worried about it. Mick Hizal has a, a one-second advantage over Lakovsky, but Igor Fraga, of course, closing in. The gap is now only 1.2 seconds between Lakovsky and Fraga. He's closed in by over two seconds, and we haven't even got to the Porsche curves yet, so watch for Igor Fraga come the end of this lap. He's going to be absolutely on fire. This is fantastic stuff there you can see the German commentators thought they'd be going even more mental because their boy at the moment is going to take victory Nick Hazel there once uh, Mangano and Yoshida come into the pitch will re-inherit the lead and look at the gap coming down Jimmy as they go through the Porsche curves it's now less than one second even with the dirty air Igor Fraga absolutely homing in the, on the back of Koto Lankowski this time by will be the penultimate lap as Mangano and Yoshida come into the pit lane so they'll go back down behind our three leaders but Fraga look on traction under braking through the fast corners everywhere Fraga is faster with this tyre and the gap now down to less than a second on Koda Lankowski and 1.5 seconds to the leader Mick Hazel we do actually have an instant with Gallon and Yamanaka Yamanaka all the way down in 11th position so it's fair to say I think his challenge is over and here comes Igor Fraga to the inside of Koda Lankowski have the inside line here will be on the outside for left-hander and Igor Fraga is he through yes he is Igor Fraga up into second position one more car remaining that is Mick Hazel in front and he will be leading this race from 10th to second and only is only one second remaining as it stands right now He's he leading. would be the champion yeah Igor Fraga doesn't even need to go past Mick Hazel to win the title so it's looking very very much in the favor of Igor Fraga as Yamanaka who's quite simply fallen to pieces just it picks up a warning there so goodness knows what's going on with Yamanaka he's in 10th place on the hard tyre he is out of this now and look at uh, Mick Hazel there he's just looking up in the mirrors he knows what's coming it's a Brazilian named Igor Fraga who's already in the lead of the Nations Cup but he wants to win to go with it here he is in the toe going down to the chicane looks to the outside Igor Fraga he'll be patient with this one he'll be very very patient to me knows he's got the pace no need to do anything crash at this point here is Igor Fraga looking to the right no he's gonna push <laughs> Mick Hazel he doesn't want anything to do with Cody Lakowski at this point they're working together to try and escape Cody Lakowski and that is working now the gap up to 1.7 seconds between him and the Australian driver and Fraga there being a very clever thinking he'd rather fight one person than two well Let's find out what the Portuguese commentators have to say, because Igor Fraga, of course, leading the way. Igor Fraga vai ser campeão do mundo! Não tá fácil, isso não tá fácil, isso não tá fácil. É o Igor Fraga! O Igor tá, vai passar no azão! Espetacular aí! Já não precisa de mais posição, mas ele quer ganhar a corrida, porque já tá na frente! Igor Fraga! Na frente! Galera do Brasil, galera do Brasil! Well, they're happy. Igor Fraga into the lead of the final race here at the Nations Cup World Final. Leader on points, leader on track. One lap to go next time. He crosses the line. Igor Fraga, is this it? Is it done and dusted? Can Mikhail Zell put out something special? Can he do what Igor Fraga did on the hard tyre and compete with those on the soft tyre? Up to the Porsche curves we go. His out should drop away now because Fraga on those soft tyres. Well, he's not, Jimmy. Mikhail Zell is hanging on. Despite oh, the dirty air and being on the hard tyre, his out somehow. Oh, wow. Managed to roughly 
Well, please stay with him. He Bobby. was until that last curve there, but just fell off. We're now coming on to the last lap of the race, the last lap of the 2018 FIA GT Championship, the Nations Cup final. And this eagle front of this man who is currently looking like he's going to win it comes across the line. There are your live point standings. As it stands, Mick Hazel and McCoskey would be tied. Hazel would take second given that he finishes higher in the double point race. And Yamanaka, your leader coming into this, would be fourth with Karatsa. He'd be fifth. So looking very good for the Brazilians at this point. The gap, 1.7 seconds. Now, will McCoskey be able to catch Hazel and maybe bring himself up to second position? Igor Fraga, this, well, what a drive this is after what happened in races two and three. Igor Fraga, he seemed very, very calm in his interview, knew what, knew the pace he had around this track in this car. And Igor Fraga has just stayed calm, taken his time throughout this race, worked his way towards the front. Yes, of course, we've had Yamanaka fall back, and that's definitely played into the hands of Eagle Fraga. But nevertheless, he's put the work in. His stint on the hard tyres may be the best he's done throughout these championships. And Eagle Fraga now leads by two seconds. This almost a parade lap for the Brazilian. We won't call it before it happens because stranger things have happened at sea. We'll, we'll see if Fraga can bring it home, of course. He's in a great position right now, as Chris said, on the soft tyres. Has the fastest tyres. Mick Hazel second. Cody Lukowski in third. And we must talk about Mick Hazel. He was given a bit of a rough draw with cars. Started, started tenth in the first race after a poor qualifying on the Thursday. But has managed to keep himself up in contention and bring himself back to second. I will likely finish second overall. Meanwhile, there's still a scrap going on down the field. The Swillow, who we haven't seen much of, is being pushed by Coque Lopez. They're both trying to catch up to Shogo Yoshida. They're on the soft tyres, so they have the tyre advantage. And of course, looking to score a few more points to try and improve their ranking. Here is Igor Fraga. He comes through the Mulsanne corner for the last time and comes up towards Indianapolis. You can see in the background that Lukowski has really gained on Mick Hazel. The battle for second is not over. 1.4 seconds now. This is going to be your battle to the line, and it is the battle for second in the FIA GT Championship Nations World Final. Anyone's game at this point, Chris. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Mick Hazel has to hold on for the next half a lap or so from Cody Nikola Latkowski. The gap 1.4 seconds as they go into Arnage. Has he got enough? But look at this. Igor Fraga out front started 10th. 10th on the grid and he leads the way by over three seconds started on the hard tire moved all the way up the order then fought his way through to victory and Igor Fraga is just corners away from being named the inaugural world finals champion he's put in a fantastic performance today Igor Fraga it all started with qualifying of course earlier in the weekend then we did the semi-finals Igor Fraga may, may have had a rough time of it at times today but he is about to write history Igor Fraga one corner to go the Brazilian out of the chicane is named your first FIA GT champion here he comes across the line he is world champion what a result Igor Fraga wins the 2018 world finals champion oh well I'm not for words, Eagle Fraga, your winner. Look what that means there for Eagle Fraga. He's up on his seat, hands in the air, and a well-deserved victory, a release of emotion for the Brazilian driver. We thought he might have thrown it away at Monza, but he came back strong like he always does and absolutely decimated the field here at Le Mans. Mick Hazel comes home in a strong second place and Kony Lukowski, an outsider coming into this competition, manages to take third. A fantastic display by all our drivers and worthy of being the top free in the world and there is Karatsa with Fraga. Great to see that compatriotism there. Chris, that I can't think of a better finish to this series. It's been absolutely amazing to be a part of it and to have such a strong climax to the event. It's what this deserves. It is. And what a performance. I mean, looking back at the performance there, Jimmy, that first stint, would you, would you say that was what won it for him? Definitely. I've never seen anyone be so strong on the hard tyres. He was doing soft tyre pace on hard tyres. No one could touch him. You can see just how much it means to him there. Uh, Nico uh, Rubelar giving a little bit of a pat on the back.
And let's go to the replays. Here is Yamanaka. He was leading things coming into this race, but it wasn't to be for the Japanese driver. Immediately came under attack from Hizal and Lukowski, both on him straight away, first and second, and Yamanaka down to first. Then we went, of course, this was the battle for the lead and they changed hands loads of times, the top three all led at one stage in the first half a lap. This was Karatsa and what would be the start of a downfall for Tomoaki Yamanaka as he was once leading the points, as you can see, despite being in third. Um, fortunately, he would drop all the way to almost going out of the top 10 and that was, uh, this was his fight back on Karatsa down at uh, Indianapolis. And uh, that was when Fraga said thank you very much, picked up fourth and would later go into third place. You can see Fraga there and Karatsa, they worked together for a bit and here was Patrick Bajan going past Yamanaka. Again, things going from bad to worse for the Japanese driver. And here was Igor Fraga charging through the field, made swift work of Koei Lopkowski and then set his sights on Mick Hazel. Yeah, well, Igor Fraga, he was quite literally unstoppable, as we said. Soft tyres for him, hard tyres for the rest. Hard luck, I think, for everyone else. Igor Fraga came through, and that was the last anyone saw of him, basically. He would steam off to go and take the World Finals victory, Jimmy. And there it was. The moment he became the champion, Mick Hazel and Cody Lukowski came back in the background. And again, look at that, the Brazilian driver and deservedly, absolutely exuberant with that victory. And again, the moment it's all paid off, all that work, all the races, all the superstar races, all the venues comes to this and he wins. So here are the final standings from the race, Chris. Well, race four result then, Eagle Frogger took the win and the 24 points, then it was Hizal Lakovsky. A big, big shout outs to all three of those drivers. Of course, down the field, Tomoaki Yamanaka only walked away with two points. Nico Rubela, another disappointing result for him at the back of the field. OK, and here you are. Here are the final standings of the uh, FIA certified GT Nations Cup with Igor Fraga taking the victory with 54 points from Makovsky from with 45. Mick Hazal down to third there. So Makovsky, Hazal, Yamanaka fourth, Karatsa fifth, Yoshida sixth, Lopez seventh, and Patrick Bajan rounding out your top eight. Let me go down for, to Ryoto Kokuban ninth, Giorgio Mangano tenth, Jeff Gallon eleventh, John from Wong twelfth. Portia 13th, Swillow 14th, Yatlam Law 15th, and Rubelova. Disappointing uh, uh, series there, down in 16th position. So, that's it, Chris. That's us all said and done. We have a new champion. Fantastic. Well, let's find out what that champion has to say. Igor Fraga is with Julia. Yes, I'm here with the winner, the first... Okay, I just calm down. How do you feel? I, I don't know, it's like, you know, I was just trying to do my best to win this race and even, uh, you know, winning the race, I needed to have like kind of lucky result with the other guys to be the champion and I'm just not, like not believing, it's, uh, it's unreal. <laughs> I mean, you had us a little bit worried earlier on, but you managed to pull it back. So was it the, the little chat we had earlier made you feel better? Yeah, maybe. And I, I um... Maybe trying to speak with uh, other people just uh, distract a bit your mind and you, you get calmed down a little bit and maybe, you know, think better for the next one. Who knows? I mean, I don't think it was really anything to do with me. I think it was your supreme driving. I mean, what do you want to say to uh, all the other drivers out there who, you know, you've competed against uh, over the past few days? Yeah, uh, they were really strong, you know, and entire all the weekend. You saw that I, I also had like a difficult time uh, during the races. So, you know, this showed that how good the other drivers are also. But, uh, you know, the, the last race, I think I made one of the, my best race in my life. And, you know, it was such amazing. Oh, well, huge congratulations. It's been amazing to watch you race. Uh, we'll have, obviously, the uh, trophy presentation in a little bit. You go sit down, relax, have a drink of water, and we'll go and have a chat with Matt, who's got some very, very special guests. Yeah, I think we all need a rest and a glass of water, Julia, after that one. It was a fantastic race, and also just getting his breath back here. As you said, a very special guest here, the Deputy Vice President for Sport at the FIA, Mr. Graham Stoker. Graham, you were just saying to me, you're exhausted after yeah. watching that. What yeah, an incredible what, event. What an exciting race. And on my favourite circuit, that was fabulous. What did you make of the event as the whole, the racing throughout, and, and particularly the sportsmanship and camaraderie here? Well, the sportsmanship and camaraderie is fabulous, but... What I'm noticing is the race craft, the lines, the decisions on tires. I mean, this is real racing, very exciting.
Yeah, that's right, isn't it? And it's all stuff that's hopefully for some of these guys at least going to transfer to the real world. Do you see these two kind of forms of racing getting ever closer together in the future? Yeah, we're looking at this. We're proud to be associated with it. We're looking at it for talent detection. I want to see it go around the world looking for talent. And there's a lot of talent here tonight. So the FIA not just putting, of course, their name and their stamp of approval on this event, Graham, but also actually looking at it as, uh, you know, something serious for the future. This is an integral part of motorsport. The Olympics are interested. We're, as a global federation, interested. We want to see this grow. Fantastic. I'm really glad you enjoyed yourself, Graham, and thanks for your support. My pleasure. OK, enjoy the rest of the evening. And, uh, well, we're going to get our podium back out here in just a few moments. In the meantime, let's cross back to Chris and Jimmy. Well, it was, uh, I think, a pretty dramatic way for Eagle Frogger to, to pick it up in the end, I think. Not just talking about that race in terms of a whole, wasn't it? There was a lot of, a lot of drama for Eagle Frogger throughout the event. I think we're going to go into some replays now and have a look at how Eagle Frogger became the world champion because he did do a real fantastic job to pick up the title over five races, essentially, because we had the semi-final yesterday, of course, where we, uh, on Friday, sorry, where we did pick up points. And then we had four races today, Jimmy. So it was one over five races. Uh, let's take a look at the four races that were made up today and how Igor Fraga won it. Here was the first race in the BMW M4, led from pole as he likes to do. Easy victory by his standards in the M4, made it look easy anyway. And here's where things started to become a little bit more tricky for Fraga. Contact with Yamanaka on the last lap at Interlago saw him go from the lead eventually down to fourth position. But here, here was the stint where he made his mark. On the medium and on the hard tyres, he showed extreme pace. And then on the soft tyre, just proceeded to decimate both second and third position and take the lead away from the European champion, Mick Hazel. And this was then Igor Fraga. He had gone into the race lead there. And that was the moment he took the victory in the Nations Cup World Final. This was him then coming through the final corner. And here is what it meant to him. I'm sure we'll hopefully pick up Igor Fraga celebrating. There it is. That's what it means. That's how it feels to win a World Final. Can't say I've done it myself, but uh, now I know what it feels like. <laughs> me neither, me neither, Chris. Uh, I need to say one thing before we do continue, and that is that Mick Hazel was actually classified as second overall in the series there, but a mistake on our graphic. We're coming back to that. Look at that. <laughs> I love to see such a positive release of emotion from someone there, and Eagle Fraga, I think, deservedly taking that. And good sportsmanship all round. Everyone straight up to congratulating him. Uh, the drivers actually jumped onto the stage. Whoops. <laughs> were the racing instant on, on, by our commentary box. Uh, we're actually <laughs> manufacturer series drivers. They, they, uh, all of them in the uh, studio here uh, all really enjoyed that race. I really enjoyed that race. Any personal highlights for you uh, throughout today? Of course, it's hard to look away from that stint, but any other, anything else throughout the, the day that you, uh, you particularly enjoyed? I mean, I really enjoyed seeing Mick Cazal and his his pushback essentially from being out of the competition almost and then coming back to somehow somehow finishing in second position overall but guys that is it from us here at monaco and that is it from us at the season uh, both chris and i have been along for this fantastic ride that has been the 2018 fia gt championships both the nation's cup and the manufacturers we started in the warehouse and we ended up at monaco not a bad shout at all was it chris it's not bad but that's not, <laughs> not a bad way to go who knows what'll happen next time well let's go over then to the podium it's time to award the trophies and crown our champion Third place, third place from Australia, Cody Lakowski. <laughs> and onto the second step of the podium, what a drive it was, what a weekend for the man, Mikhail Lightning Hizal.
And in first place, born in Japan, but representing Brazil and how your FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup world champion, Igor Fraga. And please welcome to present our trophy for third place, the chairman of SIE Worldwide Studios, Sean Layden. To present our trophy for second place, please welcome the FIA Deputy President for Sport, Graham Stoker. <laughs> and before he gets his trophy, he also takes a watch on behalf of Tagger. Please welcome the official timing partner of GT Sport, Tagger, represented by Olivier Vollery. And to present our trophy, this wonderful trophy, for our first ever world champion, please welcome the brains behind this whole event and this game indeed as well, the producer of the Gran Turismo series, Katsunori Yamauchi, and your world champion once again, Igor Fraga. Please now be upstanding for the national anthem of our race winner, Brazil. Did you see his face, Matt, as he was standing there listening to his national anthem? You could feel the pride just beaming out of him. He's worked so, so hard to get that place on the podium. He's worked hard as an IRL driver online.
he's done everything he needed to do to get himself here. This is the culmination of a life's work, really, for these guys, you know. And this is just the start for them as well. This is only going to get bigger and better in the future. These guys are going to be at the forefront of it. I'm sure we're going to see them again next year. Once again, well done to Igor, to Mikhail, to Cody, and to all the competitors here in the World Finals, the Regional Finals, and online too. What a a few weeks it's been. It's yeah. been absolutely incredible. And I want you guys to know, uh, if you, you know, you've listened to a lot of the conversations we've had on the stream and actually some of the conversations that we've been hearing around here, this is only the beginning of this kind of competition for Gran Turismo. So I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are at home, you play GT on your PlayStation, you've been watching these finals, you need to go to the website and try and like be here next year because trust me, this is only going Get bigger. It's only about if only half yeah. of the things they've been talking about that we've heard come to fruition. It's a hundred percent worth your time because I know you guys out there that play this game and love it. Yeah. And you could be you could be standing on that podium next year. You just have to get involved. So please, please do go and check out those details on the website. Yeah, grand uh, grand turismocom for all the info. Look at that, Igor Fraga there <laughs> with Mikhail and with Cody. Such sportsmanship that we've seen throughout. And you know what, Igor as well, and our manufacturers uh, series winners yeah. from yesterday, those guys are going to go to the FIA Awards on the 7th of December and stand up alongside the Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton and all the rest yeah. of the FIA champions. As Graham Stoke has said, you know, and you've got to take it from him, this is not virtual racing, this is real racing. These are real drivers and they are real champions. This is it. We've enjoyed every moment of it. We will see you again next year from all of us here. It's goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.